Looks like we're live and we lost Chris. <laughs> so Chris, if you can if you can hear, uh, we, we lost you, buddy. Well, while we're waiting for Chris, hey, it's it's, it's good to be with you guys. Um, as you've seen so far, the uh, the Don Wells uh, statement has revealed a, a quite a bit, and you've seen that that words are are pretty powerful, and the words the words reveal uh, more than anyone thinks that they will, and uh, you know that's the that's the golden nugget of uh, of our what we do uh, as analysts in the investigations and. And going into any statement, this is the this is the holy grail, uh, knowing how to break down what they say. And uh, man, I, I can't stress how much it how much of a difference it made in my uh, law enforcement career, and is still making a difference in the in the cases that I assist with, I assist law enforcement with, and uh, and other corporate and and private uh, other investigators. It's just a unbelievable tool. What we're doing here with with Chris, um, you know, Chris's interview with with Don Wells is was a fantastic interview, and um, Don doesn't realize it. Well, he does now, but he didn't realize it then that that he he really revealed a lot more than uh, he revealed <laughs> a lot about himself. There's Chris. I got knocked out of my own. Uh... My uh, the the beginning here, so I apologize for that. <laughs> um, anyway, hopefully the uh, this uh, will hold up. Uh, t take it over, Steve. Keep running, whatever you were <laughs> saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I will in a minute, but go ahead, do your thing. It's 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 your crew. It's your it's your group. Oh no, this is uh, it's great having you here, buddy. It's good to see you. <laughs> it's always great to be with you. You're I'll a top-notch you. individual, so anytime I can hang out with you, I'm a, I'm a little bit better. So any anytime. Well, you're living on faith. You're living on faith, brother. <laughs> and uh, uh, hello, everybody. It's uh, good evening and aloha. Welcome to the interview room, uh, part three. Uh, and boy, we've got a lot to cover tonight. I um, let me let me get set up here because I got knocked out just for a second. Whoops! There it goes again. Whoop! It's back. All right, let's see what's going on here with my uh internet but i'm gonna share uh so steve so tonight we're gonna do part three uh of our uh the call with don and uh also um i've got a another call that um i want to mm -hmm. play now, this call is from Don. He called me again. Uh, but this one, uh, you know, I got to be honest with you. He was, uh, it was, it's interesting. Okay. It's interesting. Now, there's a couple of uh, words here that I need to uh, make sure that it doesn't go over, you know, YouTube. Uh, so I may have to stop. Uh, and then I'm going to read through it and then I'll play it again. But it's only a three minute call. And uh, I'm going to let, uh, let me get in here, set it up. Okay, so this was a, a call from Don, another one. And uh, I'll just let it play. We don't, uh, we don't necessarily have to, you know, break this one down in totality because I think it's going to be pretty obvious. Okay. Um, so let me tell me if you can hear it once I start playing it, okay? Give me and Steve, if you can give me a thumbs up that you're hearing yeah, you it bet. on your shot. You bet. Okay. You ready? Let's All go. right, here we go. Oh, one other thing, you'll hear Candace yelling as well in the background. <laughs> you the truth, and you twist it all. Okay, what That's did, why what did I, I lie about? Tell me, be, tell me what I lied about. Tell me what I lied about. 
So this is where it gets a little ruckus here. Uh, Candace says, you're an um, effing idiot. He says, we all make mistakes. You act like you're Mr. Perfect, like you ain't done an effing thing wrong uh, in your life, and that's a lie. And then I say... Okay, what have I done wrong? Oh, according to you, not a damn thing, but I'm sure you have. I'm asking you, you're not perfect. If you... If you know my life, so tell me what I've done. I know what Christ says, and he says everybody has, has sinned. And so tell me you have a sin. I'm a sin. Tell me, tell me. So then he goes, tell me, he says, so tell me, you tell me you haven't sinned. Tell me a effing lie. I'm a sinner, I say. I agree with you. And then he says, yeah, you are, you are a sinner. Don't effing lie to me. I, I find it interesting he's talking about Christ while dropping the F-bomb on me. Uh, you ain't no better than me, F and you. And he goes, F you. Uh, and then this was the most interesting part. And I will do everything I can to slander your name. And he'll do everything he can to slander my name. Wow. So that's how I want to start tonight's show, uh, <laughs> which, you know, I think somebody's coming off the rails here and um so let me let me switch now uh to the call that we're here and steve while i do that uh give me your assessment of um what you just heard there while i switch over yeah well let's just call out the audible here um summer the five-year-old summer wells is missing this is his daughter and there was not one mention about Summer in that whole phone call. He's upset about a SA with his uh, stepsister or niece, or I'm not sure which one or both. That's that's what his concern is, not, not Summer. And she wasn't mentioned once. So anything that we have mentioned uh, in the last two episodes about Summer was he was not concerned about that. The only thing that he was concerned about was 
was this this essay thing and uh you know i found that obviously very telling it's uh his concern is not on summer and that's, yeah, which, that's where it should be yeah which kind of leads us into i thought the i thought the fact that you know he kind of came off the rails on that without <clears throat> mentioning summer i mean i you would have expected him to you know just kind of come unglued on me about summer okay? yeah. but instead instead it was about you know the allegations that his family has made about them uh and he you know so the fact that he also says that a five-year-old initiated sa uh just blows my mind uh, you know i mean yeah. his daughter his daughter's wearing a paw patrol you know jammies and um i don't know uh, they're uh, so it, it's kind of a unfortunate segue into tonight's third part because really this is where you know we get down into the meat and potatoes of of what you know his first statement was and now the second statement just actually makes the first statement even stronger sure does i agree um, so steve i'm again you know if you're new with us here tonight and you're just joining us uh, first of all thank you for being here uh steve and i are grateful uh, we uh the interview room i mean we try to bring you the most uh you know clear-cut truthful uh pieces of any type of true crime that we can uh you know report on and this is one of those channels that you know we're not going to run around with speculation and all this other stuff and hocus pocus and you know point people in the eyes and all this other stuff if it's true it's true and that that truth sticks for itself and when you hear it from the person who said it uh you can't get any better bingo card than that right yeah you know it's as clear as day and well said. it's yeah. you know what i mean so uh that said we want to thank all of our mods for being here miss sophia our, our our leader maui girl uh mimi j2 four sons mom mrs tj uh thank you so much for everything you do and if you're new to our channel and you just subscribe, thank you so much. Uh, we're grateful that you're here. And that's the only reason uh, we do this is because of, of you, our subscribers and our members. Uh, and hopefully uh, we're able to support law enforcement and victims families uh, through these types of tragic events with our experience. So that said, Steve, uh, if and also, guys, if you're not familiar with Steve Johnson, he is a forensic statement analyst as well as a forensic writing analyst. Uh, he's one of the best in the world. He trains law enforcement all around, uh, internationally as well as uh, nationally in the U.S., etc., Europe, you name it, he'll do it. Uh, and his links are going to be below uh, at the end of this uh, as we go along here. Uh, I hope you're going to learn something pretty cool because every time I listen to him, uh, I certainly picked up uh, something more. So... <laughs> Steve, I'm going to follow your lead. We're, uh, we left off at 2637. Uh, you, you do the stop start, and uh, we'll go from there. Does that sound like a plan? Yeah, that sounds good. We've got a lot of, lot of ground to cover, so I think we'll, uh, we'll, just, we'll just pick the uh, – I'll just stop you on the, the most obvious sections. Uh, now I know there's a lot of people listening that have some, some uh, statement analysis – uh, training and you're going to say well what about this and that there's going to be little things but but i'm going to pass over some of the the less significant things and we're just going to focus on that which is most significant so that you know to make the most of our time that we have here tonight okay and uh d man in the back if you could slow the chat down if there's a if there's a way uh we'll do that and uh and if not, please be respectful of our mods and one another here. We, we're grateful that you're here, but uh, please treat each other uh, with kindness. Okay, that said, here we go. Right, but that was different yeah. than you, though, right? Did you? Yeah, but I, I did. Yeah, I, went, I looked everywhere also. Yes. And what about the door? You know, I don't remember. But I do know that the boys... We 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 cuss them and cuss them because they just leave it wide open all the time. Right. You know, and like, you can't. You got to keep that locked or shut, and and they just don't listen. Yeah. For hey, context, Chris, I'm going to stop you right. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah, no. Go. You you go. I'm listening. Uh, I, I, what I was going to point out, uh, and I'm anxious to hear what you had to say about that, was um, 
number one, he he's normalizing this that 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 door is, is normally left open, and why? He's blaming the boys. Um, he he cusses the boys all the time, um, but it's it's their fault. And so this goes along with um, the the abduction narrative. He it's 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 um, necessary for that to have. It's one of the theories of how she could be abducted among all the other things that had to align perfectly, uh, which in my opinion is, is the chances of all that aligning is, is, uh, I mean, you have a better chance of being struck by lightning than, than to have everything aligned in order for that to happen. But, uh, this is narrative uh, necessary for his narrative. Yeah. And the other, the other piece I was going to say, Steve, for context, uh, Candace in her statement says that the boys were locked in the house, nobody in, nobody out. Oh, so okay, that means the door downstairs had to be locked. And now, I think, as this narrative has you know continues to create itself, okay, that it's now gone from well, it could have been, I don't really remember. Uh, and now he's been saying, you know, Don's been saying, no, the door was open. Okay, so, you know, that's that's it their keeps opinion. changing and, and yeah, it keeps yeah. changing. It's it's it keeps, it moving keeps adapting, target. like you pointed out. Yeah, and oh, by the way, yeah, yeah, he he did some doozies over the last uh, since the last video, but uh, we'll see where that goes. But let's keep mm -hmm. going. You ready? All right, sounds good. All right, could yeah, could yeah. Summer open that door? Probably so. Yeah, I would say so. Yeah. How many times have you been seen her open it, if you know? She's, I, I don't know, but she's pretty intelligent for her age. She's real intelligent, very smart, very yeah. agile. Yeah, Miss um, Rob, Miss Robin said that too. So one thing I have picked up, Steve, since we've been doing this, yeah. and every time he's asked a hard question that may have a connection to potentially somewhere in the middle, the truth, he answers, "I don't know." Okay. Or yeah. I don't remember, like you pointed out the other day. Okay. And that became really apparent when all I was asking him on that last phone call is how old was she? Okay. And how old were you? And he kept trying to deflect the question with, I don't know, I don't remember. And here yeah. we see it here when I asked him about the door. Okay. He, he says... Uh, how many times have you seen her open it? If you know, I don't know. Okay. That, that again, he keeps coming back to that is, am I missing something on that? What's your, what's your way in there? No, you're, you're spot on and you've identified, uh, his pattern. One of, one of the aspects of his pattern, we've identified a couple of them as we've gone through. Um, <laughs> and so you're spot on and here's how, you know, that this is that that's deception uh when that that's part of his deceptive pattern to say i don't know because what he's doing now is he's giving you a he didn't just stop there and say i don't know now he's gonna explain how that could have happened i don't know but and but's one of those words that that most of us we just gloss right over it's an invisible word it's, 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 it comes out of our mouth and our brain effortlessly. And what does it do? It refutes or minimizes what came before it and what makes what comes after it more important. And what comes after it, it's an explanation as to how that could have happened. Yeah, Summer could have opened that door because she's pretty intelligent for her age. She's real intelligent, very smart, very agile. And so he explained it. He gave you a, an explanation as to why that could have happened. It wasn't enough. He was feeling stressed because you identified, no, this is what it was. A, it was one of those questions that 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 put the, the fear in him, the stress in him. And he and now he had to explain it. Even it wasn't he wasn't uh, good enough for him just to say, I don't know. And if that really was the case, Chris. He's done. No other explanation needed. Just uh, I don't know. And if he's telling the truth, the, the, the truth stands tall and strong and it needs no explanation. And yet uh, I, I would be in, curious to go back. And now that you've identified that every time he says, I don't know, I bet 
he follows up just like he did here with explanation as how it actually could have happened. And that's that's a, that's a telltale sign that uh, this is extra stressful for him. So much so, it's, a, it's he has his acute need to explain and persuade that this could have happened that way. Very good. Okay, here we go. Yeah, she loves to run. And I could be running my lawnmower, and she was just running behind me constantly the whole way. I'm stopped. She, the boys would be riding their little motorcycles. And she would be right behind them all the way, over and over around the house, time, just nonstop, plenty of energy. Would she chase them? Well, she'd just be running behind them laughing. Right. She wouldn't be, you know what I mean? Yeah. 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 Like just kids, having fun. Like little kids yeah. do. Yeah, she don't even need a bike or a motorcycle. She, you know? Right. So tell me yeah. more about her personality. She just loved, she would always hug me back and hold my hand so I can twirl. And I'd hold my arm there and she'd just sit there and twirl, twirl till my arm just about give out. She loved to do that. And she, sometimes we play rock and roll music or whatever music. And she liked that song, Godzilla. I had it saved on my phone, you know, and everybody put me down for that. But deep for, she, for something about Godzilla, she just lied. She always said, well, he's a nice monster. He, he gets all the bad monsters. He, you know, he takes care of all the bad monsters. Yeah. You know, so it was just if, if they only cool. knew, right? If if the yeah. little kids only knew. Yeah. You know? And so, when you pull up and you see Grandma, what was Grandma doing? And just kind of standing there, dumbfounded, if I remember right. Uh -huh. you know? Do you get along yeah. with Candace's mom? <laughs> I haven't for a long time. We fought for a long time. Um, she's the reason I got arrested and charged the way I did because she told him I put real bullets in a muzzle loader, oh. and that's ten ten years mandatory, no bond. Tell, tell, so me, about, was, tell me about that. Um, well, when I come back from Utah, I was I was trying to move my family to Utah. I've always knew that something was going to happen to Summer. It's just something in my gut has always told me, and I've always told Candace, watch her closely. That's my that's my baby. Do not let nothing happen to her. I told her that all the time. What, what, brought, you, what brought you to that? Um, this is incredible. So I'm going to back up just a little bit, and then and then come back to what he just said. Um, you asked him. When, so when you pull up and you see grandma, what was grandma doing? And he says, just kind of standing there dumbfounded, if I remember right. Um, and, you know, that is that is not what he's kind of throwing grandma under the bus right there. That is not what a grandma would do uh, when her five year old granddaughter is missing. And so he's he's implying that. She wasn't doing anything that he's the one that was doing everything. Uh, he's building himself up and throwing others under the bus. And then he says, she's the reason I got arrested and charged because she told the cops that I put real bullets in the muzzle loader. And that's 10 years mandatory. No bond. He never denied putting real bullets in that muzzle loader. And, and I, I've never heard that. But he's blaming it on on her. And this is another pattern that I am seeing throughout his interview with you is that he's constantly blaming others and and puffing himself up. And so he's doing that here with with grandma as well, that it's always someone else's fault uh, for that, that I'm, I went to prison because of her, because of grandma, because she told him the truth that I had bullets in a, in a muzzle. I don't know how that works. I don't know how you can put, but, but I'm, I don't know. Um, maybe that's a possibility. I'm not quite sure, but uh, anyways, blaming her for sure. Yeah. I mean, it, it seems to be a consistent pattern and it sounds like, you know, I'm in his circle now based on the last call. I mean, he, the very last statement he says, you know, I'll do everything I can to slander you, you know, well, okay, get in line. I mean, uh, you know, yeah. we've been doing this since, you know, what, forever, right? Yeah. I mean, can yeah. you imagine how many times I've heard that? Go ahead. You know, the, the, the revenge, that's part of the whole revenge 
yeah. theme that we've seen throughout uh, this this yeah. conversation and and I've I remember you've you've called out this revenge thing a couple times and uh, it, it's just part of that theme yeah so so let's so get to I'm this gonna... part here go ahead okay Sean I'm gonna go back to this question uh, what brought you to that thought okay yeah what, what brought you what brought you to that thought I don't know I just I couldn't put my finger on it I didn't know what what it was or I just, I just always have this feeling. This wait, wait, hold up, hold up, hold up, Chris. Okay. Um, I, I want to go. I want to go back just a little bit before before we uh, lose it. Okay. I want to go back to this statement uh, because I don't I don't want to miss this. This is this is important. I think because you asked just just prior to that, you were saying uh, he was blaming this on on grandmother about. Uh, the the muzzleloader thing, and he's saying, you know, that's ten years yep. mandatory. And you said, tell me about that. And he says, well, when I come back from Utah, I was I was trying to move my family to Utah, and then out of the blue, I don't know where this came from, but it's like a total different context. Uh, there was something something that triggered this, and I haven't quite put my finger on this of what triggered this, but he says, I've always knew that something was going to happen to Summer. Something in my gut always told me he's who's who says that? I mean, just in this, in this context, where did that come from? OK, so he's, he's foretelling he's, he's laying the foundation that it was meant to be that something was going to happen to summer, that it was it was just kind of in the stars that something was going to happen to her. And then look what he does here. And I've always told Candace, watch her closely. That's my baby. Do not let nothing happen to her. I told her that all the time. So what he's doing is saying, I knew that something was going to happen to Summer on Candace's watch. Yeah. Nothing else. Yeah. He's, he's blaming this on Candace. And I'm going to... Now refer back to a statement that, that we he said earlier in the interview that we covered in one of the, the last two segments. He said, when he's describing the suspect, whoever's responsible for Summer, he said, somebody put her in, her meaning Summer, put her, Summer, in her car and took her not too far away. So he identified in his mind, the suspect is a female. And and we've seen throughout this subtle finger pointing to Candace. It's it's and we're going to see more of it as we continue on here. But but in the last two segments, if you go back, all of you that are watching, if you haven't seen those, there's a subtle finger pointing and blaming of Candace. And that's what he's doing here that I always knew it was going to happen on her watch. It's her fault. Yeah, very interesting. And and. I think for our listeners too, Steve, you know, I think folks, what we need to remember, there are two issues here. The first is summer's disappearance. That's number one. The second is the essay allegations that came out of the statement. Those are two separate issues. Okay? The second could have an impact on the first. We don't know yet. Okay? The authorities are obviously working this case, but with Steve here, and uh, we're breaking down these, you know, his statement. These, these are not our words. These are his words. You're hearing it. Okay. And all we're doing is analyzing the totality of that, of his statement. Okay. So for, for that, I think it's relevant to understand that the nuances in this case could find summer, could help find summer. Okay. So, uh, we really appreciate your support and everybody, you know, uh, being here tonight to listen to this because, you know, this could be this could make a difference, a huge difference. Okay? Mm -hmm. So that's an amazing point, Steve, that it sounds like he's connected a female uh, into this particular scenario. And it sounds like he's connected Candace. Is that what I'm yeah. hearing? Yep. Yeah, abs absolutely. Because to Inter your point. Interesting. Yeah, it's it's. His, it's his perception of reality. That's what we get from his words. We just apply the principles when we break these, these statements down. 
we unpack it with the with the principles. Uh, it's and we just apply it the same way every time. And it's it's what he tells us. I, and I said in the beginning when we started these these uh, segments, uh, I'm going to believe him. I'm going to believe what his words tell me, because I'm applying tried and true principles to his words that always reveal the truth. And so it's just just like you said, it's it's his words, it's his language. And all we're doing is applying the principles to break it down. And and this is this is what we have left is his he's giving us his his perception of reality. He's re, he's recalling as he's talking to you, he's recalling things according to his perception of reality of what what actually happened. And that's what we're that's what we're getting. Yeah. And when he said it, to be honest with you, you know, I, I had this aha moment where I was like, why is he saying as a parent, you kn you know, something was going to happen to her. Hey, okay? I mean, yeah. wow. Wow. I mean, you should, uh, he should be thinking about college. You know, how do I yeah. get this girl to college? Yeah, you know, absolutely. As her, as her father. Yeah. Know? Uh, so you want me to keep moving, buddy? Let's let's go. Yeah. Okay. It's not happened to her. I didn't know if she was just going to get accidentally run over. I, I didn't know what it was. Did you think but she would be kidnapped? Never. Okay. Never. Nothing like that. Okay. No. I just knew it was something. I, I just had this intense love for her. And I think... I think she knew something too. Something, I think something was, I don't know if, if you believe in guardian angels or what, but it, it's something, it's something. So, so this is the other pattern that I've noticed about him. And we just heard it. He can cuss you out. Well, you know, claiming that, you know, God is, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, there with him. Right. Yeah. I mean, we just heard him F bomb me left and right. And, you know, but and in this case, he now is going to bring in guardian angels because he knew something was going to happen. You know, I think I think she knew something, too. Well, what is that all about, Steve? Well, here's here's the context of that. I was going to pass it up, but I'm glad you stopped because I was kind of wanting to explain to to dig into this one. <clears throat> he just said just knew it was something. And then he says, I just had this intense love for her. Uh, so, Chris, you, you have never told me that you have an intense love for your wife, for your kids, but you don't have to because I know they're your loved ones. And I, I have loved ones myself and I have intense love for my wife. I have intense love for my kids and for my grandkids. And I don't need to tell the world that I have that intense love for them. I just do. And I and I don't need to tell the world because, because everyone out here has a family and everyone is is has this bond with their with their family and their kids and, and loved ones. And it's intense. And it doesn't need to be stated. Who has a need to tell the world, to tell someone else? that they have an intense love for their kid. Well, it's someone that needs to convince. It's someone that needs to, to build themselves up. He is he's portraying himself as a really good father that has this intense love for her. Chris, it's wrong. And it tells me that there's something under the surface that is severely wrong. This, this statement right here, brings me full circle back to the essay and it, it kind of turns my stomach a little bit um, because this to me is if I didn't have that essay in in the language it I wouldn't be as concerned about this but he says this and then what what gets me is he says in that context I think I think she knew something too and it it's implying that that summer had the same type of feelings towards him that he had towards her now look i i have i have daughters and and i have and my daughters uh you know a couple in particular are are daddy's girls and and they 
you know, it's just that's just the way that it works out. Um, and, 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 you know, that's the case with every family. He has a different context. He has a different uh, type of of love we've seen in in prior language. And so this is what concerns me. Um, and he's he's kind of putting it. He's, there's there's a couple of different things happening here. It's in associating with uh, this. I think she knew something too, so he's connecting that up with this intense love, and and he's also implying that that Summer may have known that she was going to die, that something was going to happen to her, which absolutely makes no sense to me. What what five year old knows that that they're going to die? That yeah, no. It, 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 it doesn't make any sense. So it's it, chilling. It's chilling. It is chilling. It, it's absolutely chilling and it needs to be paid attention to. Uh, so, yeah. And, and by the way, also for our viewers, if the, if this is a trigger for you, we're, you know, we're getting into some pretty sensitive stuff and I want to be sensitive to you and considerate yeah. of, of you survivors and you and folks that you have experienced, uh, you know, uh, a traumatic, uh, essay experience. Uh, please consider, uh, you know, coming back later if you have to. I we completely understand. I'd rather have you safe and feeling comfortable uh, than you know listening to, you know, these two guys here, right, me and Steve. So, uh, please take care of yourself first, okay? Yeah, absolutely. Are, are, are you ready, Steve? Yeah, yeah. Let's go. Oh, okay, bud. So you get back. So tell, walk me through that that incident because I I know that was the one that you got arrested, right? Yeah. Well, so I get back from Utah. Candace tells me that she moved man in the house. She didn't tell me he was gay and all this and that. She wanted me to come back. Okay. So of course I'm mad. I'm coming across the United States, 110 mile an hour average in that little truck. And uh, I got that's some intense anger. Coming across the United States at 110 <laughs> miles an hour average. Okay, I'm gonna keep moving. Yeah, I take it to prove it. But um, anyways, he didn't take me to jail. I told him I says, man, I told him what's going on, and he says, um, he said, he gave, he gave me a big break and says, slow down, man, you gotta get there alive, you know. But he was really cool, and uh, so I come on and uh, get there and. You know, the first day everything's kind of okay, and then we started drinking a little bit. And uh, he was, Candace had told him I messed around on him one day, and I, which I did. I totally, you know, I regret it. To, I regret it. There's a big mistake I ever made with her. Um, messed around on her at one time, but they they started jumping on me, her, her, and Can Candace and him. And I was going to hit him in the head with a beer bottle. It was full of beer, but. At the last second, I just threw to the wall. Is this, but, that, uh, is this that uh, Jose guy? Yeah, and so I had all three of them jumping on me, you know. Right. Yeah, the Jose guy, her, and Candace's mother were all jumping on me. And the cops got called. Candace, after I threw that beer bottle at the wall, the cops got called. And that's when her mother's, you know, said, well, he's got a gun in the glove box. I says, well, it's just a muzzle loader. I mean, I'm allowed to have a muzzle loader. And she says, yeah, but he puts real bullets in it. Oh, you know, and she's, you know. Is that how she so, hurt her knee? Um, well, she was pushing me. She kept pushing me. Jose would say something. Like, I remember the one thing he said is, once a cheater, always a cheater. Because his wife left him, or cheated on him. So he's taking out on me at this point. And, uh. And he, every time he would say something, she would push me. He'd go say something else, she'd push me again. I never, I never hit her or nothing, but the last time she pushed me, I pushed her out of the way and I was going to hit him with that beer bottle and she fell. I didn't even realize she fell, you know, or I pushed her to, you know, whatever. I was just trying to get her out of the way because I was going to nail him. And, uh, so of course she went and called the cops and told them, she didn't tell him the whole truth. Yeah, what, she, she what, put it what is that? So, yeah, tell me the truth. Because it, yeah, she, she said that I, I, that I was pushing her and hurt her and all this and that, you know. But I was, my intention was just to push her out of the way so I could hit him. I didn't want her 
So let's just, I'll use your words. Let's just flesh this one out a little bit. Uh, I love that word, by the way. Um, so it's it's just interesting here how <clears throat> he's, and I'll back up a little bit. Uh, remember when he said he was on his 
driving 110 miles an hour to get here and and the cop stopped him and the and the cop was really good to him the cop gave him a break and it was he he's portraying himself as as being you know uh the, the cop had empathy and sympathy and empathy for him in his plight to to get home and and so uh you know good good relationship with the cops at that point and and now we get here and he kind of does the same thing uh you asked him what did the cops ask you did they ask you to hang on and stay on the property walk me through that day and and you and i both know and we talked about this a little bit last time uh when when we have a scene like this we don't want we don't want the parent the family going anywhere we want them right there in case we need them and so we'll we'll put we'll assign somebody to stay with the family and and if we have to assign three or four people, then we do that, depending on how big the family is, what the dynamic is. But we want them there. We're not going to let them wander off. And so he says, they kind of want me to stay there or whatever. But I'm like, man, you need to let me go question at least the drug dealers. And so he's inferring that the cops were going to let him go question the drug dealers. He didn't actually say he was allowed to go question the drug dealer, but he's inferring that, but that he's... Um, he has this a bond with the cops and and that they actually let him go and and you and i both know that that's not going to happen that ain't so gonna happen. yeah so point number one um and then i love your question so and he he taught you what question to ask by what he said do you think the drug dealer took her because he's going to go on and on and on about the drug dealers. And he just said, you got to let me go question the drug dealers. So that implies that that's in his mind, that that's number one suspect of what, of who, if, if, if uh, summer was, was abducted, it was the druggies. So you got to let me go question them. What do you think the drug dealers took her? Not that I'm aware of. I mean, <laughs> and he totally flip flops. He totally goes 180. So what would be the point of going to talk to the drug dealers? if you don't think that they're responsible for summer's disappearance and it's just it's just as a bizarre as you said it last time it's it's a combo plate we get this and, and i call it word salad he's throwing everything he can <laughs> out there but then now he's actually kind of comes to the drug dealer's defense do you think they did it no no they, they can't do it and he's gonna he's gonna come to their defense a little bit more uh, as we as we move along here, I think just in just a, another few seconds. Uh, so, yeah, you can li listen for that as we come up to it. It's just uh, he's flip flopping all over the place here. Yeah. So uh, the question right before that is, have you known any kids to be traded for dope? And to your point, what you just said, never in my life. So I'm going to pick it never up right there. Never in my there. life. I can. I've never even heard of anything like that before. Okay. I, I think it would be interesting to see if one would even do anything like that. Because I think most of them tell you that they'd probably beat the hell out of you. Yeah. And, or, you know what I'm saying? I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, but you don't I think, think some of them, got, I think some of them got more integrity than that, even though they're a damn drug dealer, you know? Sure. I don't know. Well, I mean, you know, with the intensity of meth and, you know, crazy, yeah. right? Is it possible? Yeah. I don't know. I mean, I really don't know. Uh, the thing that that bothers me the most, and we know he has an alibi, but that doesn't mean that he didn't get it. And we know that. So he goes here, I don't know, I really don't know the thing that bothers me the most, and then I skipped over the name. And because he would do anything to get at me. And this is the guy I think he's referring, well, I know he's referring to the guy that he fired. And yeah. we know he has an alibi. So he, he gives him an alibi. Okay. He yeah. says, we know he has an alibi. And I'm assuming he's referring to Ellie and his family because he says, we know, to, to pick up on your, on your uh, training here. Says, but that yeah. doesn't mean that he didn't get with uh, blank somebody else or somebody you know. And we know that they have ties on Facebook. Uh, so this is the guy that he was talking about with the 12-year-old boy in the front lawn uh, that was, you know, being chased by this wackadoodle. Okay. Uh, different victimology, 
I guess anything's possible. We'll see what TBI is going to do, but it sounds like they've already flushed this other guy. Yeah. Uh, so, so I'm going to go and, from there. And, and, and I appreciate Steve. that he's throwing out possibilities. I think ex that's exactly what, what we want to hear from a parent. We want all the possibilities. Um, but if you're going to throw, if you, if this is the one you sus, you know, if this is the person that you suspect, and this has been what two months, I think, after you know when you did this interview, has it was it has two months since Summer disappeared? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's been it was a month and a month and a half okay. or thereabouts. I got to check the exact date. Yeah, so something in there. Uh, so he's had time to think about this, and um, he's still this is his his narrative, and this is what he's trying to to get across and, and push that go focus on this guy. I know he has an alibi, but I really think that this is where the focus needs to be. And it, Chris, it tells me that he's grasping, he's grasping at straws here. Uh, he, I know he's been cleared, but he has ties to other people, and and this guy is the owner. So he's, Chris, I think he's he's kind of running out of he, he, he. There's no there's no substance to to his narrative of the abduction and. And this this is a good example of it. I want you to focus on this guy, but I have nothing to back it up. And and I know he's been investigated, and he and they and he has an alibi. He's grasping at straws to to keep that narrative alive of the abduction. Yeah, and that narrative is the abduction, not yeah. not that not that somebody, you know, could have or who does drugs, right? I mean, you and I would both uh, agree Correct. that is is this, you know because in my mind there's only a couple options right and it's an accident uh you know the fact that if it's if this is a random abduction i.e. a stranger abduction i i don't know the 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 methodology of this kidnapping it as you and i have talked about extensively and coop and, and others that it just doesn't fit it doesn't fit right and so either the suspect knows that property and is there and is familiar with that property. It's an accident, i.e. a swing, stairs, or whatever. People panic, okay? Where yeah. this drug transfer, you know, comes in, th this is he's been introducing this narrative from day one. Yeah. With, with this thought process that you just pointed out, I always knew something was going to happen to her. Right. Yeah. Okay? Come on. <laughs> you know, where are we here? I'm going to keep moving. They Let's have it. ties because of Facebook. These, these detectives have told me that they have ties. They, they've worked with him. They know each other. You know, you I say, know he was you, psycho. You say these detectives, not TBI, you're, the people you're working with. Right. Okay, great. Yes. Okay. And I'll gladly give you their number if you... Maybe you guys can get together. I don't know. I, I just, like I said, I don't, I don't hardly trust anybody anymore. I don't trust the police anymore. I don't, why would, I mean, there's just so much weird stuff. I just, it just blows me away. Yeah, there's a lot of moving parts for sure. And Yes, you know, sir. I've, yes, sir. Uh, it's not my first rodeo, though, as you know. Uh, and right. I'm sure you've done your homework. And, well. and so I, I, I want to stay focused on, on that right. that day because this is it's critical that day yes and, and you say this guy you know you have us you have this feeling that this guy's involved what brings you to that feeling even though you say he has an alibi because he would would have done anything to get back at me so revenge like i say yeah revenge he tried everything in the world and told they told he told them all kind of stuff to try to get me fired and all I would say in my defense is, see, that's what he does every day. So he has a problem with him on the job site, and he has extended that now into him possibly hurting his daughter. Yeah. To get to get revenge on him. Yeah. It, it, it's a it's a weak assertion. Yeah. It, it's a there's there's very little substance to this implication that that 
summer yeah, was a we don't even good. have to say anything about that 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 can yeah. really just sit sit there for what it is right Steve? yeah yeah, yeah exactly that's what, that's exactly what he does every day. Okay. I don't need, we don't need that kind of stuff you know, on the job sites and all this and that. Cause he's just drama every single day, you know. Where's, one he, way or the other. where's he been since summer's been missing? You, you know what struck me when I heard this again? Hmm. The, the last call, the last sentence. He said, I will do everything to slander you. Right. Yeah. What a correlation, it, huh? Yeah, it's almost the, the same, same language, isn't it? Yeah. Interesting. And then he, and then he gets into I don't trust the police. That's coming later, right, Steve? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I know the police have been to his house. He had his uh, truck up on jacks, and he's definitely got alibis. Um, what kind? He, uh, what kind of truck? Real fast before you go past. Uh, yeah, see, I mean, he's throwing him under the bus as if we're supposed to follow along, you know, the bouncing ball. And then, you know, he slides in there, but he's got alibis. And then the bouncing ball keeps coming again. You know, and we're supposed to just follow the bouncing ball uh, in his speech here. Um, yeah, that, that, that tells me that he's grasping. At, at, he's got nothing. He just wants the abduction theory to to be believed, just carte blanche. But there's... There's no foundation for it. He can't give it to us. Yeah. That, that Nissan Pathfinder, there's, there's a picture of it because we, we he drove to my house and we rode in my truck because we had a long distance to go that day. Now, I think that's a slip. Because he said he drove to my house and we rode in my truck because we had a long distance to go that day. And he says he took the Subaru that day. You know, that's a good point. He did say he took the Subaru that day. Uh, is, and, it, is he referring to that same, to the day that Summers, that Summer well, disappeared? I let him run on that. And then I asked him to see how he was going to answer it. And he caught it and corrected it. Okay. But listen to how much he gives us here. You know, you know. And it's just been a fight with him. You know, you know how some of these meth people are. You can't reason with them. You can't. You can't. They 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 start seeing stuff. They start thinking everybody's after them, and they start thinking all kind of weird stuff. You know. So there's just no. You you just a normal person cannot be around somebody who's on meth. Yeah, you yeah. Know, I know Hold that up. feeling. Yeah. Uh, right. What what he did there is he asserted that that he, Don, is a normal person. Uh, who, 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 this goes back to what I said earlier when, when he was portraying himself as the good dad. Uh, who has a need to do that? Who has a need to portray themselves as a normal person? Well, it's actually someone that knows uh, that they are not normal or has been told that they're not normal. Uh, he, he, there's something in his mind that he knows that things are not normal and, and, but he has a need to portray himself as such, even though he has told us that he's, he has, uh, addictions, uh, he's, he's been to prison. He's not perfect. And, and he's naming off all these different things. He's told us that he's, uh, been in, in, uh, these essay type relationships, and, and and myriad of other things, yeah, there's reason to believe that he's not normal. Um, so anyway, I just wanted to point that out before we got past it that there's just just more indication of what's going on. We're getting we're getting deeper into Don's mind here. He's he's telling us, and uh, there's something yeah, something so, not not right. Yeah, and so you know we'll give him a mulligan on that day, right? I mean, he could have been talking about the day before where he fires this guy, you know, they rode the truck together. Uh, but I, I find it interesting. Could it have been actually that day? Uh, right. Cause that would put that guy on the property if they came back together. It would. And, so, and mm -hmm. that would, that would actually explain this normal person thing. Because if it was that day and things were and and there's some kind of involvement here, um, 
then obviously he wasn't acting like a normal person with that day. He wasn't acting like a normal dad with that day. So uh, that would, that would fall in line with that, Chris. Okay. And, and so uh, what, what color was his truck? Yellow. There's a, there's a picture of it somewhere. I can't remember where it was somewhere on Facebook or somewhere it's been going around, but it's, it's picture, you know, it, oh, that, or summer's dancing in the rain. Oh, you can see it in the background. Yes. And was he on the property that day, if you know? Yes, yes. What? So there you go. Oh. Yeah, there I you go. I asked him the question. I tied it together, meaning I asked him, was he on the property that day? And he says, yes, yes. And then he corrects himself. He catches himself again. What time? When he, well, well, when we come back to get, you know, we come back, and he got me. And, and he stopped. When we came back to get pause. Yeah. Then he got he, then, then he got his truck to go home. So that was kind of confusing to me because I felt maybe he was throwing himself back into the Subaru there and that they didn't drive together, but that the guy came over, parked his truck, and they went together in the Subaru. Uh, that's still what do you call it? Salad? Word salad. What do you Word call salad, it? Word salad, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, that needs some dressing, Steve. That needs some dressing. <laughs> I I need you to take a look at this one a little bit further, but we're going to keep moving because I, I need you to, we need to talk offline about that one because I'm still kind of confused. Is this guy on the property? Did he go to work with him? Did they drive together? Did he pick up his truck? Uh, I'm not sure yet. Yeah, Chris, this is really interesting. So. Okay, we did. Yeah, we should dig into it a little bit more. When you say when we come back, when did you get in the car? Right. When I'd say it, I, I, we probably got back around 6, 6.30, maybe 7, sometime late. It was a long day. You know. And so how did he get back with you? Within this little white truck. See, now he's added another vehicle. Yeah, he sure did. Yeah. Okay. Or somewhere, uh, can't remember now. So, did you uh, you, you do a job up there that day? Yeah, it was way up to uh, trying to remember what it's called now, but with, uh, my with, mind's blank. With him? Yes, yeah, we rode together to save gas and everything, plus I okay. tried his big piece of job. And, and is that where you got the phone call from Candace? No, no, this was way prior to oh. this. Um, when we was working out here in the meadows in Jonesboro is when I fired him. So now he qualifies it to the day before. Yeah. Okay. Um, and yeah. he kept, yeah. And that was the day before, right? Yes. Okay. The day before summer disappeared. And so then did you come back with him that day or the day summer disappeared? Um, to the job? Yes. Yeah, I come back to, to work on the job and try to clean it up, and I stop. Okay, so uh, now the day Summer disappears. Yeah. He goes back to the job. Well, what about to try to clean it up? To try to clean now, it up? What, That's a, a reason. Yeah, but he's talking about the mud. He's talking about from the... Okay, so remember earlier on... He says, yeah, this guy was throwing mud everywhere, okay? But then he's got, yeah, I come back to work. So he's going back and forth and and help 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 everybody understand what do you think is happening here because he's putting himself at the house and then at the job with this guy in both places. That's what I'm getting out of this. Am I off? I don't know. So what happens is when 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 these people so he's formulating Chris, he's formulating his answers based on everything that he has going on inside his head. And so his answers are going to uh, address what you asked him. And they will also pull in information that he has in his head about other things that he doesn't want to reveal. 
but it's just the way that it works that our, our brains were made to communicate and they communicate beautifully. If we just slow down and listen, we'll, we'll understand that, that our, that it's, it's pulling out words that relate to more than just one thing. And, and, and I, I understand that, uh, that there was a mess on the job from the mud. I get it. The fact that he shook, that he, Chris, you could just say, I went to work, you know, and, and I went back to work and, uh, you know, why, why the need to say that I, that I had to clean it up? I, I just find this interesting. Look what he says. Uh, you asked, well, he asked to the job. And, and so he said, then did you come back with him that day, the day summer disappeared? And he says, he asked, uh, to the job. Uh, he, so he's specifying. You said, yes. Well, he says, yeah, I come back to work on the job. And he, he puts an and in there to try to clean it up. Chris, it's two separate things. I come back to work on the job and to try to clean it up. It's a, it's a, Chris, it's highly sensitive. He, it's two separate things. And, and he's cleaning something up. And for, for me now, this could, he, I'm not saying that um, I, that he is that there's something messy to clean up regarding summer. I'm just saying that there's a possibility here. He has posed it because he divided this up. It's two separate things, and and it's focused on the day that summer disappeared. And Chris, when when we look at the totality of this and what he's doing, and I and I. And we're going to see more of it come up here in the statement that we have, you know, here shortly, um, that he has portrayed himself as the one that has that's in control. Um, always. He always portrays himself this way. It's always someone, some other sod, some other dude, some of somebody else's fault. And uh, he's blaming a lot on Candace and that he has to clean up Candace's mess. Uh, and I'm. I just find that this is just an interesting way to phrase this. Why would why would you even add, add that in? Is it necessary to add in? Can you just say that I went back to work that day? Just answer your question to the job. Yeah, yeah, I come back to work on the job that day. And but he it, for him it was necessary to say that he had to clean something up and to try to try to clean it up. Say so it was uh, like a like a problem for him to try. So. Yeah, and I've, I've, I, one of my thought, pro, one of my theories has been that Don was home, and Don did go to work, and if he did go to work, which I think he did, but I think he also got home uh, because, you know, he's got three boys at home, and I think, you know, people did see him. Uh, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, uh, so hang on for a minute. I see, uh, somebody, Benny Skeezy. Oh, good. Welcome. Uh, so everybody, I'd like you to meet Mr. Lindsay, uh, Benjamin Dwayne Lindsay. He's just entered into our chat here and he is gone. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, no. So where I was going is this guy. Um, goes to work, and then I think he does come home. And, you know, maybe that's a time frame there, and then he goes back to work. So, I, I you know, I'm going to believe these guys that say, yes, uh, you know, he was there. Okay, great. Okay, but um, I think there's more to that piece of the puzzle. And uh, I'm glad uh, that guy, I've been waiting for that guy to come in for a long time. So he's, he's history. Anyway, sorry, guys. <laughs> uh, and by the way, go say hi to Plano PD because uh, they're coming. Just give you an FYI. Look over your shoulder. Okay, yes, but like worse than other uh, uh, tweakers. Okay, we got that. So keep playing this here. Some of the guys out there, I, was, I told them, come out over here and look at this job over here. Look at this. And they was like, wow. <laughs> they couldn't believe it. This guy, 
his work was just horrible and he's just out there he is just big time out there it's, I don't know. It sounds like he was spun, was uh, tweaking. Yes, but but like worse than any tweaker I've ever seen. Uh, it it could have been math, but but it's like worse than I, anything I've ever seen before. That. I mean, I've seen some things in my time, but this was like way worse. Like maybe he's mixing something. But he's like, and he goes and tries, and you know, but it's like. It's like, He's talking about the guy that got arrested for trying to snatch, allegedly, a 12-year-old boy. And he, he basically chased the kid into the house, and it looked like he was, you know, his eggs weren't scrambling correctly that day, probably on tweak of some sort. Uh, but anyway, he runs into the, ho- into the garage after this 12-year-old boy. Can you imagine how scary that kid was? And oh, he runs sure. into the house where this, uh, his mom confronts the suspect and says, get out of here, and calls the cops. Okay. So, I, you know, I guess he's got him up on the property snatching Summer as well. Okay. So, uh, well, but we'll it's go. a total, totally different M.O. I mean, if this guy is, is, is tweaked out of his mind, he's not yeah. going to be the guy that, that sneaks up on the property and to purposely snatch Summer away, uh, it, you know, in, when, in stealth mode. This is the guy that does it in broad daylight, and because he's tweaked out of his mind, doesn't know what he's doing, uh, yeah. he's just going to come up and, and, and do it. There's no, going to be nothing uh, clandestine about it. <laughs> so. Yeah, I mean, how many of those guys have we seen, right? I mean, when you sit them down in the interview room, they look at you and they go, can I have a bologna sandwich? Right. Uh, oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Let's start there, shall we? Yeah. You know, let's keep moving. It's like worse than that. I don't know what what it could be. I have no idea. You ever heard of crocodile? Yeah, I've heard of it. Yeah. Do you think that? Yeah. Do you think that he could be crackling on that stuff? It could be. It's something. It's something crazy because you know, like, a, we're supposed to be a team out here. And I'm like, okay, we're going to do butt joints, okay? So I mix up two bucks a month for butt joints. Next thing I know, he's on his steels working on a tray on the high ceiling. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? We're supposed to be doing butt joints together. And he's just, he, he's mumbling some stuff and whatever. And I'm like, so I get down off my steels and I set up mud for him so he can do that. And like I say, he, he was... He spent two hours on that thing. It was something that should have took 20 minutes and just was cussing. And he's like, there's just all kind of stuff in my mud. What get, you know, he, he told me, asked me if I'd dump it out for him. I mean, he had mud slung everywhere. He'd grab a bucket. He's trying to do 100 mile an hour. I'm like, man, you got to slow down. You can't do You can't work like that. Right. And uh, it was just on and on and on, day after day after day like that. But getting worse every day. Yeah, and, when, and this is this, yeah. Go ahead. No, that's all right. You you finish your thought. Oh, I was gonna say this is the fifth person in a row that I've had to fire over drugs. Yeah, the fifth one in a row. Yeah, and, and, and it seems like after they get that paycheck, you know, it's when it's all stars. Yeah, and when 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 he's been up on your property, there has he seen summer? Yes, and Candace said he didn't like the way that he was looking at her. Tell me about this. She, she's, well, I'm not sure. All I know is she, she was mad because he was looking her up and down. You know, that's what she told me. And when, she when, didn't like him. when was that? Many, several times. Several times. The first day that he was up there, and, and she told me several times since then. Did you think of him the day Summer disappeared? Yes, I did. And what did you yes. think? What he did was you my think? first suspect. He's my first suspect. And he still is. And and why did you tell me why? Immediately- because he was, because he's out to get me any way he can. He is he'll do anything to get at me. So this except for face except for face me face to face. Got it. And so cowardly. I understand. I respect that. No, yeah. yes, and, sir. And and when he. Why do you think he, what would be his motive outside of to take her 
to revenge against you? What's another, what, why would be, there be another reason in your head? Well, okay, like seven years ago, he worked with this company before and he went through this crew, that crew, this crew, then he worked with me. And it was, I worked with him for a half a day and I was like, dude, I don't know what's up, but I'm going home. The next day by 11 o'clock, I'm like, dude, I cannot work with you. I don't know what your deal is, but I can't. And this was like seven years ago. And, uh, so, so I, I told, I told my boss, I can't work with him. Let him do his own apartment. I'm going over here. I'm going to work on this place. And then he messed all that up, ended up getting fired. He let his wife left him. And took the kids. Okay. To another state. Okay. To another state. So he took the kids. No, she did. To protect him, protect the kids. Yeah, and plus, right now he's on probation for something, and I don't know what that is. But one day I walked out to his truck, and he had one of them uh, phony things that you pee out of. Yeah. And put somebody else's pee in there. Yeah. He was putting one of those on. And saying, well, I smoke my weed. I got to have something for my weed, man. I got to have my weed, you know. And I'm thinking where he's from, where he was living in West Virginia, weed's legal. Yeah, is, is that for his P.O.? Yes, he was going to go do a drug test for his P.O. Right. And I thought, well, I didn't think much of it then, you know. But after thinking about it, they don't care if you smoke weed. Yeah. That's the least of their worries. Yeah. I used to supervise the every Thursday night, everybody coming in and right. with the pee cup. So I know yeah. where, I know exactly what you're yeah. talking about. And right. you have to stand next to you and watch it piss, man. That's all. That's yeah. not, that's no fun. <laughs> no, I guarantee you it's not. I wouldn't want that. But, so, yeah. Okay. So what it, what's your fear then uh, of my, my biggest fear is that the heat's on him and he will get rid of evidence, meaning my daughter. Right, right. That's my biggest horrific fear. Have the, has TBI and yeah, I, FBI interviewed him? Yes, and he's got alibis. And um, then they say, well, we just don't see him like that kind of a person. I say, well, you don't know him. You haven't seen his prison mentality come out like I have, or his thug mentality. I've seen it, and I've, and I've tried telling them that, but it's like, it's just, they don't even sink into them, it seems like to me. I don't know if they're really listening to me, or just, I don't know what the TBI, they don't, they don't say nothing. Now walk me through that, were you in the joint with him? No, no. I've been, I've been trying to straighten my life out for years since I found God. Right. You know, I was I was locked up in Utah, you know, and drugged back to prison many times for nothing. Right, I remember you told over, me this. Over, uh, so hold up a little bit, Chris. I mean, I'm not perfect. Okay. So uh, this part right here, um, he, what he's telling us here is that he still hasn't straightened up his life, because uh, he says, "No, no, I've been I've been trying." to straighten my life out for years since I found God. And so good for him. And and I hope that Don is successful in straightening his life out. I really do. That's, that's the goal. Um, and I mean, we all, we all have stuff we need to straighten out, but he's telling us that he's been trying to do this for years. And he's, so he's still working on it. And, and I, I, he still has the, the addiction mentality, um, because he's he's always blaming somebody else. He's not taking responsibility for for himself, for his own actions. It's always someone else. She's the one. I, she's the reason I went to prison because she told him that I had real bullets in that in that muzzle loader. And here I've all, I was locked up in Utah, you know, and drugged back to prison many times for nothing. Well, you and I both know that you don't go back to prison for nothing. There always has to be. There's a reason there's a you you violate because you didn't you didn't follow the rules, the terms of your probation, your parole. You committed another crime, whatever the case is, there's 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 rules and you got to toe the line. I, I, I know uh, uh, ex cons that have spent a lot of time in prison that I still have a, a, a relationship with 
yeah. that have straightened their life out. Those are the guys that toe the line, uh, worked and worked and worked, and there were and it was difficult for them. Uh, They'd be the they, first ones down at TBI saying, "Where's my daughter?" Yeah. How can I help? Right there, there you go. And I didn't mean to so, interrupt. I'm sorry. No, that's an excellent point, Chris. Excellent point. Um, that's not what we have here. That's that's totally opposite of what we have here. Um, I want to just jump back to to you asked him. Okay, so what's your what's your fear then? Uh, and he says, my biggest fear is that the heat's on him and he will get rid of evidence. And then <laughs> and then he had to throw. It's like his brain's like, hey, dummy. Uh, and I sh and I shouldn't say that, but his brain said, hey, you evidence is not what you should be focused on. It's your daughter. And so to him, his daughter's a piece of evidence. Chris, it's not appropriate. It's it's just not appropriate. Um, that that whole that whole that whole narrative right there. Um, it's he's just concerned about evidence being being covered up. And and th this whole thing about this guy, he's got he's got alibis, but yet I want you guys to to follow up on this and and believe this, even though he has alibis. I know the authorities have followed up, but it's this revenge thing. And you know, let's talk about what are what, the numerous other ways that that a, a guy could get revenge on him. And there's numerous ways that he could get revenge. Well, okay, this is the, your suspect because he tried to snatch his twelve year old from the garage. All right. Founded, I I buy that, but it's like we said before, it's a total different. This is not the kind of guy that that comes up stealthily and and snatches a a, a five year old little girl. Um, he's not able to do that, and especially with all the dogs and everything on the property, and that we've already gone through, it just doesn't align. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, it, it yeah, it's it's not lining up, and um, you know you know what's really interesting is. You know, here's a guy that not, you know, for, we, remember, we have two issues here, folks. Okay. And, and I see what's going on here tonight. I, I'm very aware of it. So uh, we'll, we'll resolve it later. It's not important. What's important is summer. Okay. And one of the things, there are two issues, find summer. And the second issue is the essay uh, to these, vic to these uh, survivors. And, and at some point for many, many years, one of them, 37 years. Okay. She's been trying to figure her life out, too. Okay. I have more empathy for her okay, than I do some guy getting drugged back and forth to prison by a, a parole officer okay, or anybody that supports that idea. Okay. So, you know, this isn't my first rodeo, and, and you'll find out why. I think, uh, you know, Benjamin, Dwayne, you know, Lindsay just found out that... Okay, so we'll play the game. I'm uh, we're, we'll play the game. So I see what's going on, guys, uh, from our from our our channel and our family here. So don't worry about it. But this guy, you know, he, to your point, Steve, he keeps dodging. And I'm sorry, I keep getting sidetracked, but I get I gotta keep an eye on uh, you know some of the goofy things that people are saying. <laughs> Perfect. I'm, 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 Not about me. I could care means, less. You know, I've, I've done I've done stupid crap. You know. And, uh, you know, you get in that revolving door, you know you can go out and sell drugs or whatever you want, and you're just going to give you a slap on the wrist, do four or five months, and back out. Everybody knows that. Right, right. You get so violated, and they... It's like, a, it's like a free party, kind of. Right. And, but, uh, and, yeah, I remember you told me that you were at Hill Air Force Base, and your PO yes. told your daughter... Your, yeah. Wash and kind of snitch you out and that kind of. They come out there. They come out there too deep and whatever they told my boss, he was just shaking in his boots. He's like, man, I can't do this. Yeah. You know? So and, they got me fired. And what were you in custody for? Can I ask you that? Um. Well. I mean, yeah. I can find out. You know that. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, somebody was. I, this guy is having a hard time with us. He was messing with my sister, causing her a lot of trouble. And that's just an excuse. There's no excuse for what I did. But I hot-wired his truck. I took everything out of his garage. 
uh, Harley stuff, everything, and loaded through the back truck and sold the truck and all for nothing. But there's no excuse. I did what I did. It was wrong. Okay. You know, um, I, I've heard worse. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, but uh, that. So another pattern here of behavior from a behavioral analysis perspective, every time he commits a crime, he apologizes for it. And then he goes to God, and then he commits another crime. The next story we're going to hear is he was running drugs down into Mexico. Okay? So he's going to apologize for that too. Okay? He's apologized for... S.A., his stepsister, he's apologized for everything, but the problem is, in a behavioral analysis aspect, is he keeps doing it. (laughs) It, it, He keeps getting reformed and going to the waters of baptism, and then he keeps going back. So just pay attention to that, okay? And, you know, he's apologized for a lot of things, uh, you know, recently, but he keeps going back. So I want to point that out before we keep moving here. You know, what else, like that. What else have you been locked up for? I mean, what, what other things uh, have you done? I don't remember. Uh, you don't remember? Come I, on. I, I, well, I mean, I've made, tri- I've made trips to Mexico. And theirs I don't remember. There you go. There you go. Theirs there you go. I don't remember. This guy's gone to prison multiple times. And all I asked him was a simple question. You know, thing. What else have you been locked up for? And that's what you know, cops do, right, Steve? I mean, how many yeah. times we've we've talked to tens of thousands of these guys, and say, and most of them, the the ones who are straight up say, you know, well, you know, I went, you know, I did a, you know, a number, a ticket on this one here, yada yada, and they lay it all out, okay. And and hardcore gangbangers were even the best. I I've talked to some major. You know, Main Street Crips, Hoover, great, yeah, one, right. you know, rolling 60s. I mean, these guys are hardcore, and they're living in the vario and in the hood, you know, to survive, okay? They're not wannabes, okay, like Lindsey in Dallas. He, you know, he, that kid doesn't even come to the top of the surface. He hangs around with a bunch of hood rats, but he's nothing, okay? The hardcore gangbangers like Estemophilia, the Mexican Mafia, the hardcore guys with the black hand over their heart— they treat you with respect, and you treat them with respect because that's the rules on the street, okay? And this yeah. guy, you ask him a simple question, he goes, well, I don't remember. Seriously? You know, I'm looking for your daughter. I would remember. I'm trying to help you find your daughter. Please start remembering. So, you know, uh, were you running? I I were, you, were you running? Yeah, was, were you running? Down? Yeah, I bought cocaine, you know, and yep. totaled a brand new truck coming back out of Mexico once, just up for days on end, thinking I'd get out in the middle of nowhere, think the Indians are after me, I'd get back out on the freeway, and I think the cops are after me, I didn't know which way to turn, right. <laughs> out in the middle of the desert, you know. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> yeah. And it, no. you used to take the 5 down or the 15? Yeah, um, I think you know. I went. We went to El Paso. Oh yeah, Texas. And, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That and I just turned. You know, and you know that turned into a big nightmare. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, I mean, oh yeah. That's like the. I was thing. lost. I was lost out there in the southern Utah somewhere. I was just. I didn't know which end was up or down. Was, yeah. So you were running dope. You've done. You know, it sounds like you. You stole the guy's truck, and then... Well, let's, say, let's just say I tried to run dope. Okay. It's hard for a dover to run dope. Yeah, that, that, that is a... That is a... <laughs> I ain't going to lie to you. What he means by that, everybody, is he's got a, a, a habit, an addiction. Yeah. And so he uses the uh, product <laughs> yeah. versus completely selling it. That's a very <laughs> true story, man, right there. Yeah. Right yeah. and, but, uh, and now, yeah. what about when this thought process comes to my mind here for a minute about mm-hmm. what was she wearing that morning when you the were same? Well, when she was asleep next to me, you know, I'm not sure. As I just woke up and they stayed in bed and I got gone to work. And 
I'm not sure, but I know the picture of her wearing where she's asleep by the milk jugs. That's what she was wearing when she was kidnapped. Okay. Okay. So it's. Does that strike you, Steve, in any way? You know, uh, so there's there's arguments, Chris, for for both ways. That I mean, um, he he used he used inserted the the timing into this. The timing is important for him. Well, when she was asleep next to me, you know, I'm not sure as I just woke up, and they stayed in bed. Uh, and it's just that he he's given you an excuse as to why. Um, but I don't know this whole thing as she was asleep next to me, it comes back to, to the essay. Uh, there's things he doesn't want to talk about. Um, you know, the reality of it is, is that the last day of your, your daughter that you had those last moments you had with your daughter, which this would be it. Allegedly, uh, you remember and those things become very vivid to you. And I mean, man, I just, I know when, when my, my daughters were five years old, I mean, I, they were just, you just, they're, those are your babies, you know? And, and every once in a while I, I just go in and give them a little kiss, you know, before I'm, I went to work and, and, you know, you just, um, those, those moments are treasured. And, uh, you know, Chris, you know, when we go, we would go to work, you know, we it was, yep. sometimes it was very depending on what was going on. Sometimes we were very aware that this might be the last time we go to work. And so you're sure to give your 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 wife a kiss. Tell her you love her. If you're if your kids are asleep, you'd sneak in and give them a kiss because um, it, it might be the last. And, you know, that wasn't always the case. But I remember being very aware of those types of things. I, I do know that. And you've been through this, uh, unfortunately. Um, but when when it's when you lose a child, those moments are very those last moments are very cherished, and and you know he's wanting to skip over that. And so it tells me that there's things that were happening there, likely likely that he just doesn't want to uh, to talk about. Good point. It's the same outfit. Yes. And is that the outfit? Candace said she did she change when she went back in the house or do we know I don't think so that's that's the outfit she was going to wear for the first day of school oh so this is her the outfit so it had some yeah. sentimental value for her yeah did she yeah. pick it out I don't you know I don't know I'm, I'm always at work and I do I mean, I'm glad she got to go to all these places with her daughter. You know, for the first two years, 18 months or so, Summer, when she was born, she didn't want her mother. She only wanted me. Wow. And, I, and I said, that just blew my blew me away. I was like, I just couldn't believe it, you know, that she only wanted me. And Candace coerced her all these years by taking her to all these places, fishing and stuff. And it took all this time to get... But can't, Summer loved her mother. You know, it took time. And I, I don't know why she was just so attached to me like that. I never, I've never had anything like that happen to me before. And I was just so thankful. You know, it was just, I thank God, you know. Yeah. So I've never had anybody love me like that. Yeah. So, Chris. No, I get it. What? So, once again, he's uh, building himself up. He's throwing Candace under the bus. Um, he's making this relationship with, with summer. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's almost this, uh, like a relationship that, that should, that should have been the, that, that he should have had with Candace, but yet he's, he's, it's now with, with summer. Um, it's, there's just, it's it's not right. It's it's very telling, uh, very eye opening that he how much he um, is portraying this relationship that you know Candace didn't have a relationship with her own mother did not uh, that Summer didn't want her mother. She and he said the words that he uses, you know, she only wanted me, 
And, uh, you know, th those are, so that can go both ways. There's babies. When we refer to a baby, you know, the babies want their mama and, oh, she, you know, she, 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 she wants me. And, and, and so I get that. Um, but he just, the way that he phrases this is, is more of a, he's skewing the relationship. Uh, I don't like the the word that he said and Candace coerced her, <laughs> coerced her all these years. Uh, that doesn't sound real good. And um, if I if I was really going to have time to, to dig into this, you know, it it may come back to that Candace may have been jealous of this, uh, what was going on between Summer and Dad, um, you know, and. So she was, maybe she didn't like it. Uh, she was upset by it. Uh, you know, I don't know. There's all kinds of possibilities here. So I'm not going to get into the weeds of it, but but you sure. see what I'm talking about. I think everyone can understand uh, the, the point here without getting into the weeds that there's 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 something wrong here. And and to go back to the the pattern that you talked about before, he brings... He invokes deity. He brings God into it. Jesus, guardian angels. He brings, he, he invokes that when there's some point that he, he needs to really emphasize, meaning that, and I, when I say emphasize, meaning that something is not right. It's not normal. Maybe there's criminal activity, something to him that's not, that shouldn't be happening. And so to make it right, he pulls deity into it. And that's one of those things that you pointed out. And he does that right here. Uh, I was just so thankful. I thank God. I've never had anybody love me like that. And, uh, you know, we could go back to all the different things that he said about this relationship. And if you if you total them all up, uh, it's going to look like this relationship uh, with his five-year-old daughter was more of a uh, adult type relationship that's in his language that's the way he describes it and when and when you hear genie who survived his essay uh you know beginning at age five to age 12 hmm. she tells me this was kind of his mo you know he plays the tickle game you know up her you know underneath her pajamas yada yada and i'm not going to go into detail but i can tell you this that woman for 37 years has not forgotten the, and she told me, she said, I remember the first night and she was five years old yeah. when, when he first started assaulting her and he groomed her till she was 12. And he, he actually went, he got, he went to prison. And that was a break for her. And by the way, while she's telling me this, and, and for the record, for everybody, I have it on tape. I have every word, she says. And she gave me permission to share this, not, not in totality, and I'm not going to do that out of respect for her. But she said the first night he was back from prison, she was scared half to death, but by this time, she's 12, right? She had a little gap in his assault. The first night he goes back into her room when everybody's asleep and tries to molest her again. And she screams and jumps up and runs into her parents' room screaming, crying, saying, he has been molesting me since I was five years old. I can't, th this has to stop. And the mom, which was her mother, and the father, which was Don's dad, Don ran out and hid. He took off from the house. And the mother demanded that she go down and file charges with her and the family. And it started a big, big Donnybrook in the family with the father finding him. And one of his excuses he got caught twice through those seven years and both times he said he was sleepwalking and he was caught mm. by his father okay? 
And so, you know, I it, when I hear this, it's about, you know, how they connected. And I just wonder, you know, as you and I both know, through, you know, our years of with these people, these types of individuals, potentially, how how much how masterful they become they do at the at the art of manipulation yeah for the target okay. uh this this is you know i'm seeing so many red flags here about that type of language uh you seeing it here so i'm going to keep going yeah. okay with that steve because i know oh yeah absolutely yeah well Sorry. said because we're getting well into said. the other what, stuff. what about I, I want now this one's going to be a hard question okay so it's all right, bro. It's all right. oh well, I, i'm you know being straight with you so right. what your ex-wife mm -hmm. uh, years ago talk yeah. tell me about that scenario where you know she went over and uh, got the kids my ex-wife got the kids i don't know what you're talking about there well she said that you know by the way, are you guys still on talking terms? Just I might as well clear this. Yeah, this. yeah, we're 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 talking. Yeah, I don't have no problem with her. I think she's gotten clean. Okay. She's had years of a uh, of uh, meth problems, but I think she's finally gotten clean and she's somewhat got her head straightened out. Okay. And so we've been talking, but yeah, there's before there was know. you know the, where she she said that you were kind of spun out and. You know that your kids got with somebody else, and you know uh, she didn't know about it, and she went and got them. Is can you? you I don't. I don't know anything about that. I, I have no idea. I never heard that anything like that. And so the other side of that. So I talked to family uh, about this particular story, and real fast, apparently he was high, and went to cop dope, left his two kids there, and came home. And everybody says, where are the kids? And he was just too, too, too out of it. And they ran over to the dealer's house, and they were there. They were sitting there. Mm. Wow. Uh, the, the other story was he was actually out on the corner with his six-month-old baby uh, with a sign saying, baby, baby for sale. Okay? Oh, my baby gosh. Baby for sale. Yeah. And that was wow. the other story that the family went and got the baby from him. So he never really gave the kids away or traded them for dope. That, that is not what happened. Uh, but he was high, uh, when he was trying to cop dope with the babies. Okay. Uh, all, all uh. three times. So that's what happened. Okay. And you know, <laughs> there you go. Right. You know, what's so interesting about that, okay. Chris, that it's, yeah. it's mm -hmm. the, it relates back to an area that I, I skipped over that I, you know, cause we're just trying to get through this. We have so much to cover. And so I yeah. skipped over it, but it's, it's, it's back in the, in the narrative and uh, the transcript tonight uh, where he was talking about um, you asked him, do you think that she was sold for, uh, for dope or something like that? And, yeah. and he said, I'd be real interested to know if you could even do that. Yeah, and I thought, I know. where in the world does that come from? That just tells me that he's open to that idea. And then he went on to defend the integrity of most drug dealers. He goes, even though they're damn drug dealers, he goes, I think most have more integrity uh, than than that. And and he's he's coming to the to the to the defense of of these drug dealers. Well, that's him. And so now this makes perfect sense. What you just said, it ties into how that that language came out of his brain to his tongue. When when you asked the question, he was totally open to it. And uh, man, I wish I would have called it out now. But but thank you for for sharing that. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. No. And that. Uh, yeah. That was early on. Uh, you, you caught that earlier on. That was. Uh, yeah. yeah. That's what he was saying. So here we go. And and I gave him a heads up about the information that would come up. And uh, that's why I'm asking I you. I mean, right now, yeah. I always go right to the source. You know what I mean? All right. And that that kicks down a lot of information 
either way. Yeah. And, and no matter yeah. what, I mean, people are going to, yeah. you know, if she tells somebody this or that, there's a lot of he said, she said. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to lie to you. I've, that cocaine thing for me was really tough for me to get over for years, you know, and I'm not going to say a lie to you. Did, were you... you know? See, now he said he didn't do it, but he gave it, if, if I did do it, I, he, he remembers it, okay? It was because of the cocaine. Because of the cocaine, the, that's the excuse. The cocaine yeah. problem, yeah. Yeah. Are you doing any drugs now, and will the cops... No, no. Did they, no, no, did they take I'm, your I'm, blood? They, t- they test us, yes. I'm clean. I don't do nothing. I won't even pick up a beer. Okay, so they... Well, for one thing, if I drink beer, I, then I do want that crap, so I won't even touch a beer. Right, so, but they took... Hey, they Chris, took hold up. So what's interesting here, I I, I kind of get a chuckle out of this because uh, you asked him, are you doing any drugs now? And, and you gave him a compound question. Are you doing any drugs now? And the cops, they take your blood. So he, he latches on. Uh, they tested us, yes. And then he adds, I'm clean. I don't do nothing. And what he goes to is, I won't even pick up a beer. And that wasn't strong enough for him. And so now he has to sell it to you. He says, for one thing, if I drink a beer, then I do want that crap. So I won't even touch a beer. Okay. So it tells me because he has this overt need to persuade you that he won't even pick up a beer because it makes him want the cocaine or or the drugs that he's likely using drugs right now as he's talking to you. I mean, not, not as he's talking to you, but I mean, you know, and now in his life, he hasn't given it up. And so he's likely, uh, he's likely still an addict and, and, and using, uh, we have this language of addiction throughout, throughout his, this interview. It just tells me this, and this kind of puts the nail in the coffin that, you know, he's, he's still using. Yeah. A very good, astute observation, Steve. I sure appreciate you. Uh, here we go. Oh, um, yeah. They, t- they drug test us. Yes. Yeah. yeah that's, welfare. that's typical yeah. in these kind of high profiles right. like this. And what about, yeah. what about Candace? Both of you? Well, she was dirty for weed. Okay. You know, okay. but she quit after all this has happened. Was- well, how does he know that? Because it takes about a week, almost two weeks later to get those tox results, if not longer. Weed is a little bit longer, potentially. Yeah, and once again, he's throwing Candace under the bus. Yeah, I don't think he knows. I don't think he knows. Huh. Summer, she's she's quit that, and now I'm just trying to get her to work on the alcohol. Right. You know, because I'm like, she... she... I've never taken blood from a sus- subject and then said... Hey, by the way, you don't have anything in your system. <laughs> yeah. I have you? Right. No, <laughs> never. <laughs> never. <laughs> right. I mean, you just don't do that. That's that's not investigations 101. So, I didn't believe that from the day I heard it. She started drinking yeah. last night. And she she quit for like 2 days. I'm like, Candace, when you drink, it just makes it Hard on me. Now I got to babysit you and everything else. And you, you know, oh, just that, right. Now this is go. So I, I just can't get over how much he's 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 pointing the finger at Candace and he's really throwing her under the bus and he's portraying himself as I don't even I won't even touch a beer. Okay, I'm the good guy, uh, but look at her. She tested positive for weed and now. She has this alcohol problem, and we have to now we have to get her off the alcohol because when she drinks, she can't control herself. And what happens when she can, when she drinks? She can't control herself. Don's saying, "I have to babysit her, and this is an inconvenience for me." <laughs> so he doesn't like this. And Chris, there's this theme throughout this whole interview that Candace has problems look, pointing the finger at her. Um, I'm, a, I'm the good one. I have to clean things up. This brings me back actually to where he said, and I had to clean things up, meaning that day 
uh, you know, he's he's really telling us my perception of reality that day is that Candace, uh, look at her. She's got the problem. Uh, it's a female that's the suspect. Um, I had to clean it up. Uh, she's she's an inconvenience for me when she drinks and she causes problems. Uh, Chris, it's it's all this theme and it's and it's all you put it all together and it just paints this picture. That's that's what he's doing. Uh, you know, one every time he answers a question, it 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 puts another piece of the puzzle uh, on the table, and it just uh, it's pretty. We're starting to see the bigger picture now that he's painting. It's 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 his words. It's not ours, and and it's it's becoming very clear. Yeah, he's got the brush, right? He does. He's got the brush. This is another hard question. All right, yeah. if if. And by the way, I had heard that too. So I, mm -hmm. I, yeah. I, I, I was thinking through that. So that leads me to think: could she have been high, and no. and that would have no. played a role in not necessarily, you know, just where she's not paying attention or grandma's not paying attention. And no, does grandma because... does grandma smoke? No, no, not at all. Okay. And the thing about that is, is she won't smoke during the day. Okay. And she will not drive and smoke because she's so afraid that she's going to get a DUI and all that. And so she will not touch it. Okay. And, but she'll smoke a little bit at night. If she has a few drinks, she might smoke a little bit and then she's going to bed. That's it. End of Candace. Okay. All Until right. she wakes up in the morning and then look out. Got it. Got it. And, <laughs> and then. Let's talk what, about this for tell a second. Tell me about. So. This this line of questioning that you gave him, uh, it's actually suggesting uh, that there was an accident due to alcohol or drugs, and and so this would your question would actually cancel out the abduction hypothesis, and so even though he was he had was previously throwing her under the bus, now because this would cancel out the abduction hypothesis he has to come to her aid and so that's what he does and he says you know she doesn't smoke during the day and no alcohol at night and if you don't believe me she's she wouldn't do it because she's afraid of getting a dui so you should believe me that that doesn't happen um and then he says she might smoke a little bit at night and have a few drinks. And, and so he's telling us that's it. End of Candace. So he's telling us that during the night, Candace is unresponsive uh, until morning. She's she's out for the count for the night. And then when she wakes up, he says, look out. So it tells us that it, he's really disparaging Candace. He's he's a. Uh, uh, I, it, to me, it's incredible how much he's throwing her under the bus and 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 using the disparaging words about his wife. Uh, it's a, and once again, it's a subtle finger point her way. If anything happened, it's it's going to be her fault. Um, she she's she tested positive for weed. She has the alcohol problem. I'm just the guy that come, that has to come clean it up. Yeah, I I feel sorry for Candace. I do. I, I yeah. Mean, I mean, I'm not, you know, I mean, just, you know, as a human, right? Um, there's, there's just so much that we don't know behind the scenes about that. Oh, so situation. much. And she, she's you know, living just, with a manipulator. Well, and yeah, and right there. So there's a part of, uh, you know, amazing uh, thought process in that. So. We'll see. Yeah. But Hunter, what's his what's his play here? I have no idea what the deal is with that because he's every time I've ever seen him, when he comes over to our house, you know, he plays with the kids. Uh, he's always been real gentle, real good. He always comes up and gives me a hug, and I try to be as nice to him as I can because I know he doesn't have a father, or he, you know, or whatever he doesn't. He lives in town in uh, HUD housing or whatever. 
so he don't get out in the country and stuff. And so I've, I've just tried to be really nice to him, and he's always been good and give me a hug and everything like every time I've ever seen him. Okay. And so this is all just since since summers disappeared and they all turned on us, that just blew me away. I'm like, why? Why? It's like they're trying to divert attention to us yeah. for some reason. And what so, about, yeah, let I me mean, just and point just, out one thing. You know, he's. Yep. I'll just point out one thing here. This is what he's doing here. Over, I mean, uh, how many times did he say that Hunter always comes up and gives me a hug? And I try to be as nice to him as I can. Why? Because I know he doesn't have a father. And and then again, he says, uh, and, and so I've tried to be really nice to him. And he's always been good and gives me a hug and everything. So he's, once again, he's portraying himself as the good guy. And, and he may be. And it may be that Hunter gave him a hug, and it may be that he he uh, was nice to him. But it's it's the fact that he's portraying himself like that to you that he feels the need to portray himself as that. That's what I have the problem with, and it tells me that there was likely something uh, going on that that he he was not really the good guy because he's having to portray himself as that, and so. That's where the red flag goes up for me. It's 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 awesome to be a good guy, and it's awesome to, you know, if he really was, um, you know, treating Hunter, paying special attention to Hunter because he didn't have a dad. But um, I'm I'm actually really not even getting that he did a whole lot with with Hunter, other than maybe just say some nice things to him, um, and that's it. But hey, it goes just goes back to that. There's something underlying here with this need to persuade that he's such a good guy. Interesting. He said that uh, obviously through you guys, you know, in different directions, and you know, and there's a lot of different. No. There's two sides always to every story. Right. 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 And yeah, absolutely. You know, some person says this, another person says that, but somewhere in between is the truth. Yeah. That's, that's right. That's always the yeah. way mm -hmm. these things unfold. Um, yes. And so, what about his mom? What? You know what? I think, I think, I think the welfare, I know that she called the welfare on us. That's why the welfare was on us and why they was worried about the weed thing. And it was fixing to close our case. But she thought, I think that she thought we called the welfare on her and she was trying to get back at us. You know, but we don't do that unless, unless it's necessary. So he doesn't have a problem, you know, basically. Unless, if somebody gives him a problem, then he doesn't have a problem going back at them unless right. it's necessary, right? That, it, yeah. Typical, right? Typical. Yeah, for sure. Uh, for, for, you know, for a guy going to church. Oh, so revenge again, right? Yeah, yeah. We never called a welfare on her. We wouldn't do that unless, like I say, if there's a reason to, yeah. But other than that, we're not going to call just for revenge or whatever. You know, but I think she, that's why she called him on us, because, yeah, for revenge. But, but for some why, you know, what I still don't understand is why when they found out what the summer it was gone, that's the instant they turned on us big time. Interesting. The very instant, yes, very interesting. And, and so there's more to these dynamics, right? Because now he's interjecting that, you know, they, they're in play here for hurting summer. Yeah. Uh, that's and another why, part of that combo play. Is that though? What do you think? Uh, you know, I started, I started wondering, did they have something to do with her abduction? You know, because they was at the parade when, when the church made that banner for Summer and it was walking down the parade with Summer's picture on it. Yeah. They were sitting there at that parade laughing, pointing their fingers, ha huh, huh, ha, you ain't got your little girl no more. I couldn't believe that. Yeah, it's messed up. I wouldn't up. even do that. I wouldn't even do that to my enemies. Yeah, that's messed up. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it is. And and, and Candace cried. You know, and it just. I'm hoping that. I'm, man, I I can't only imagine what that must have felt like. You know, as a fan. Right. And, yeah. and what about you know with uh, what puts you in your mind that maybe. He could be involved. Well, I mean, because he'll do whatever his mother says for money, for she'll give him money for cigarettes or 
let him do his little thing, whatever that is. I'm not sure. Let him do his little thing if he if she if he lies for it. And I'm getting this from Candace. That, that I know everything he said was just absolute craziness on your interview. Yeah. You know. Yeah, and and then, but what what would be his motive other than? Just to get back at I mean, and plus, did he have acts? Did he have access to her that day after Candace dropped him off? Well, we know, we know that we give that little girl. I can't remember her name ever. She's like half black, half white. I can't remember her name. Um, dang, I can't remember her name. But she, her, and Summer loved each other, you know. And uh, we give her a puppy. And that puppy, you know, when it got older, next thing we know, it's at our house. So we know they drove out there and dumped it off. When? At our house. We don't, not sure when, probably. And and this is, I'm just going to point out real fast, this is a really good point, guys, when these high-profile investigations like this, that you, it's important to, you know, as Steve said and, and, and others, Investigations 101 is you compress the investigation, i.e. you slow down, okay? And when now you're looking at this, you know, we've looked at this a couple of different times now. What we're seeing him, seeing him do here is paint a picture that he's not really sure even exists, okay? Yeah. He's putting Hunter potentially into the play by saying his mother would do anything, you know, pay him money or whatever. And then he puts him at the property by saying that drop the dog off. OK. So that means somehow Hunter makes it up the property and down in the basement and gets off the property without the boys recognizing, hey, is that you, Hunter? OK. Right. So it doesn't make any sense. Number one. OK. So this is, again, smoke and mirrors, as we yeah, call it. I'll, it I'll call this right. a huge red flag. You know, I'm not exactly sure when Candace might have been able to answer that question better than I can. You know, and maybe I can get back to you later or something. Yeah. But I say, you know, I'd say about, I don't know. It was before right, the before, before summer was, yes. Yeah. A week or two before summer disappeared, yes. Okay, so I want to focus on, you know, that day, right? Because that's, that, yeah. that's the critical part for us to right, right. kind of sort through. You know what's reality, yeah. what's not reality, right. and you know we got we got dope on him involved. Yeah. You know in terms yeah. of different people and you know yeah. people tweak right. and, and hallucinate and they do all yes. kinds all kinds of weirdness, right? Right. Uh, so that doesn't help Summer. Uh, no. You know we've got to make sure that we're we've got a clarity of focus on uh yeah. you know what time it is here now here's an so here's another question then that comes to my mind um in your heart of hearts uh -huh. what do you want to happen to the person that did this well i'm afraid if i run into them it's not gonna be good okay walk me through I really, I don't, well i mean i'm not a violent person at all but when i see somebody hurt a little kid or something i can't help myself I don't know what it is. Something just triggers in me. If I see someone being cruel to, and it don't have to be my kid, it can be anybody's kid. I see somebody being cruel, or cruel to an animal. I, I, I tend to flip. I, I, I don't know why. I, I don't mean to. I mean, I mean, you know, you, you got to understand that. Yeah. You know, so yeah. I mean. So what do you think should other, happen? What do you think should happen? Uh, I have to leave it to God, you know, and, and I know what prison's like, and I, I have mercy for anybody who's in prison, because you, you're lucky if you get out of there alive. Yeah. Anyway. So, so would you want to see this? We got to talk about prison? that one, Chris. Go. Yeah. So <laughs> it's a great question. I'm glad you asked that. And, uh, you know, he... Man, this is it's this is a fresh investigation. His his daughter is still missing, uh, so there's no closure here. Uh, the the potentials of things that could be happening this summer are, I mean, they're they're huge. There's there's a there's, a, you know, and it's not good. And he's painted the picture that uh, already from the get go that summer is likely deceased. That's that's from from his mouth. 
And, um, and now what's he doing? Psychologically, he's avoiding prison. He, he wants to turn this over to God already. And, be, and he says the reason he wants to is he knows what prison's like and he has mercy. <laughs> he has mercy for anybody who's in prison. And, and, and that's okay. You know, I, I, I hope that everybody in prison is turning their life around too. Uh, so we can have a, a, a better world and they have a happier life, but he's psychologically avoiding prison. That's, that's what he's doing with that answer. Yeah. And we have to make sure folks that again, you know, let's, let's be considerate in, in relationship to where he's at. Let the authorities handle it. Uh, you know, don't, because I mean, some of this is, you know, pretty emotional for a lot of people with, you know, finding this little baby. Don't, don't do anything stupid out there. You know, let's let TBI, let everybody else handle their business and uh, Absolutely. You know, let, let them handle it. You know, uh, these are his answers. They're not ours. I was just talking to him and, but we don't certainly want to, you know, step into anything that is unnecessary. So let's keep it keep it uh keep it classy as we always say and thank you guys for for keeping it classy tonight in the um, chat we sure appreciate you and are, are grateful for you i don't know if i could do that let's be honest with you yeah no I, I just, yeah let's pick that question up again so yeah. would you want to see this person in prison <laughs> If I could do that, let's be honest with you. Yeah, no, I, it just depends on all the circumstances, you know. Like, and what if it was an accident? Well, you know, well, that's different, you know. And accidents happen, you know. Right. And and could this have been an accident? I have no idea. I know if Candace, you know, had an accident or something, she'd call the authorities right away. Right. I know that she's not she's not devious like that. She's a good person. I believe you. She wants she wants to be a good person. I, and she you know, okay, let's talk and about this. Guys. I told you the first time we. Okay, this is this is a huge aspect uh, here of his his dialogue. Um, you asked him what if it was an accident and he says well that's different you know and accidents happen you know so don just acknowledged the distinct possibility that that whatever happened to summer was an accident this he's 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 locked into this um and, and he's okay with it being an accident uh he just doesn't want the responsible person to go to prison for this accident and this is so so revealing in his language so you ask could this have been an accident he says i have no idea <laughs> and and but that's not enough he, his brain's not stopping look what he says now i know if candace had an accident or something She'd call the authorities right away. He just focused this whole thing that uh, on Candace that he just acknowledged there's a very good possibility it was an accident. And whose fault would it be? Candace. He already set this up earlier, not knowing you were going to ask this question, but he already he indicated earlier that this likely was an accident, maybe due to uh, chemical drug addiction, uh, drug abuse, alcohol, something like that. He already indicated that was a high possibility earlier on, but in the context of it being an accident, where did his mind go? Right to Candace. Mm -hmm. And, er, and I come full circle also back to, he said uh, earlier that he always knew that something was going to happen to summer. And so he always told Candace to watch summer, to be careful with summer. That's my baby. Be careful. I don't remember the exact words. I'm paraphrasing here, but he, he said there's going to be Candace's. It's going to happen on Candace's watch. And that's what he did here. Accident. Let's, and his mind went right to Candace. And then he introduced 
in, a, in social, when he started talking about Candace, he introduced, introduced the word devious and the negative that she's not, she's not devious, you know. I've heard this in other cases uh, where they introduce a word in the negative, it makes it more sensitive. And so that's a clue for me to key in on that, that there's likely some kind type of devious behavior going on here. Um, and then he wants to be the good person again. Uh, and he's insinuating that Candace may not be the good person. It's the same thing that we've seen before. I've talked about it. It's this exact same thing. This here, the answer that he just gave you is so uh, sensitive and revealing and his, his, where his mind went with this, Chris, he's just told me that uh, number one in his mind, the number one scenario that's really playing out in his mind is that this was an accident and it was Candace's fault. We, it, so that's what you're getting. That's, that's where you're, that's where he's taking us in your thoughts. That's process. where he's taking us. He's taking us there. Yeah. Yeah. And I gave him that out just in case. You by, did. By, by asking the question. By you asking did. the question. Yeah. And it was, and it was a great question. I'm so glad you asked it. It was, it was fantastic. Um, it's just amazing what, what the words reveal. And, yeah. uh, yeah, he's, he's letting us know that this is, this is probably the number one thing in his mind. This is, uh, I see more credibility here than, you know, with this accident thing than anything else. Everything else is a red herring. This has been his theme throughout. And, and so this was the, the exact question that you should have asked him and what, what he said brought it all together. This is it. This is where his mind is focused. If, if we yeah. went back and we picked out every time that he pointed his finger at Candace, uh, there would be a lot of them. Uh, and it would be real interesting to do that, to see that, that chart of how that would play out, but there'd be a ton of them and it'd all be pointing to Candace. Yeah. Good point. Um, and you, and you got to feel sorry for her because if it was, you know, and she did panic, he, right. she, she probably did call him. And at some point, I mean, uh, you know, hypothetically, right. Uh, if this is in play and he probably drove the narrative instead of calling sure. the authorities and saying, this is what happened. I mean, how many, I mean, how many times have we sat in the interview room with these, you know, people that had committed an accident, you know, it was right. an accident and they just, they panicked. Uh, and, and then I've had other people with backgrounds like this that have come in and said, look, this is what happened and, and I'm sorry. And yeah. you, you do the investigation and you say, okay, you know, we're sorry too. have, have a, yeah. have a great, you know, have a great life. We're sorry this happened. And yeah. they walk because they did the right thing. So I'm going to keep exactly. going because I, we want to get to the good stuff for you, for you. I know we're getting close to it and give you guys a heads up again. I want you to be sensitive to the SA, uh, you know, coming up because he does talk about uh, his stepsister. Talk that oh. I had a lot of respect for the fact that she talked. And one of my one of my, one of my thought process is, you know, as this whole thing unwinds, I mean, is it possible that, you know, maybe grandma hurt her by accident and it just got out of control? I mean, yeah. uh, the goal here is to find yeah. Summer and to, yeah. and to put the truth on the table, right? right. And, well, I think if that was the case, she... She would have either called me or authorities right away. I don't think they would do that. Cause... That's exactly what she did. I called Don. That's the first thing she did is call him. And he said, call 911. That, that was what he said earlier. You know, yeah. Even this much later, if it was an accident, it's better to go to the authorities and tell the truth, you know, accidents and accident. I don't think they're that stupid like that. No, I'm, I'm not saying they are. You know no, what, Chris? No, I, I know you're not. I know you're not. I'm not. You're... Yeah. Did you realize that he just, he just said that they're stupid. They're just not that stupid. Okay. I'm... 
uh, again, <laughs> more, more, more disparaging. Uh, and this, the way that he, the way that he, you, you asked the question and, and his, his, the way that he paused and then the way he, he tiptoed into this, he, he really is, he didn't want to go down this Avenue here. Um, you know, for one thing, it takes away from the abduction hypothesis, but I think that you really hit on the, uh, the key theme, uh, with, with the accident, uh, an accident is an accident. He says, you know, uh, they're stupid. I just don't think they're that stupid. And I, Chris, uh, this is it. This I think this is this is where the, the focus should be. Let's keep going. You know, I'm just saying I don't think they would. I just don't see that. It, is it possible though? I mean, what, uh, I'm, I'm really trying to help you. I, and you yeah, know yeah, right. I, you know, and I thought about that scenario myself, but when I think about the day that she called me hysterically. And, and freaking out and everything, you know, I I just don't think so. Well, there's... I don't still, believe so. But you see, it, it crossed your mind it could have been. And so well, let's, that's let's, crossed. let's, let's that's talk good. about that. Let's talk about that. Okay. Okay, and, and because, you know, the worst, worst case scenario is the last thing anybody wants if the, if this is an accident, then it's an accident. Right. Okay. And and that's mm -hmm. that's the way it is. Okay. Yeah. And you know, the, then what what happens then is everything gets shut down and everybody says, "Oh my gosh, uh, it's you know, it's an accident." Uh, well, if it, if it were an accident, I don't think Candace would be on Facebook twenty four seven for the first week like I was, right? Trying to get the story out, putting all the pictures out. And everything that she's been trying to do, you know, the same as me, trying to do the same thing, putting ourselves out there, getting, you know, put down left and right over and over and over and crying, you know, constantly. And that's the worst thing she can do is drink because then she just turns to all tears. You know, even when the policeman brought her a bottle one night, I'm like, oh, God. That was really nice of him, but, man, you know, all her emotions come out, and I'm sure, I, I, I just, no, I don't think it's possible. I really don't. Okay, show that. Okay, hold up. You know, so <laughs> this is, you, you sensed the high level of sensitivity and persuasion in his language. And, it, and you kept going with this with this theme, uh, you know, in your questioning and what he revealed here is just it just. I'm going to stop short of saying put his put he put the nail in the coffin here uh, because, I mean, I'm willing to change my mind if he if he changes my mind, I'm going to go with him. But at this point in time, what he's doing and he's saying that if it was an accident, it rests with Candace. Uh, because if it were an accident, I don't think Candace would be on Facebook. You see that he's the onus is, is right on Candace. So now what he says is, um, either he, he, so either he thinks there was an accident and Candace is lying to him, or he knows there's an accident and is blaming it on Candace because he psychologically aligned himself with Kansas with Candace. And I'm I'm leaning towards the latter. This this guilty knowledge that he he that he has this guilty knowledge about what what occurred. So one of the one of the problems here, Chris, is that he's focused on on getting the story out, the narrative, rather than on Summer's welfare and on what Summer's experiencing and bringing whoever's responsible for her disappearance to justice. Remember, he's psychologically avoiding prison and he doesn't want whoever's responsible to go to prison we already know that that would be for candace his wife and for himself so um what about why wouldn't he say i don't think candace would be so focused on trying to find summer instead of getting the story out it's, it's this narrative that, that they're pushing out 
Um, he says that Kenneth is trying to do this. So there's she, she's not either not successful or there's a lack of commitment to what she's doing. Um, and then he aligns himself. He says, like I was. So, so he's once once again, he's saying Candace is trying to do what like I was and getting the story out. So he's again building himself up, putting himself in this this higher higher position or state or I'm a better person. Um, and he says, if you don't believe me that we've been trying to get the story out and he's trying, he thinks that that means find summer. Um, he says, we were putting ourselves out there and we're getting put down left and right and over and over and crying. Um, so you should believe us that we're actually trying to find summer, but he never said that. It's just, we're trying to get the story out there, the narrative. Yeah. And, and what, well, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. What, what about this? I mean, there's no way the PD handed her a bottle of alcohol. No way. Um, yeah. I mean, that's, you know, that, are you kidding me? That guy, if, if he, if he did that, can you imagine how many people would dance on him uh, oh, in, my in trial? Yeah, it, it yeah. didn't happen. So, but but with that, why did he interject that though? What what what? It's a pers what's... it's a persuasive, it's a persuasive statement that, um, you, you should believe me because this this all this causes Candace to drink, and when she drinks, she cries, and all this all this causes her to drink. And we are, you should be looking at us because we are aligned with the police. They are on our side. Uh, it's everyone else that's against us, but the police are on our side. They even brought a bottle to Candace because she's having such a hard time and her emotions. Oh my goodness. Uh, you know, it's really nice of them, but her emotions are way out of control when she drinks. And again, it's subtle disparaging of, of Candace, even though that, that may be true. Why say it? Um, so this is all persuasive and he's trying to, what's the, what's the, the, I guess, what's the biggest thing that he's trying to persuade us of that this was not an accident. Although he's told us before, ah, I thought about that too. That's a scenario that crossed my mind and it could be, and all these other things I already talked about that he's talked me into. I'm really looking at that. This was an accident now. So he's he's trying. He knows that that he knows what he said, and so now he's trying to steer steer it the other way. So all I'm doing is I'm letting Don's language guide me, and I believe what his language is telling me. And he's psychologically locked into the possibility that this was an accident, which is significantly different than than an abduction. And that's why we have this acute need to persuade that there wasn't an accident. A simple no was not good enough, you know, for his answer. So at this point in time, uh, Chris, I'm even more convinced that uh, there's a good chance that Don either believes or knows that Summer was the victim of an accident. And like I said, if he gives me a reason to change uh, my my train of thought, then I, I will. I'm just going to follow his language. And right now, this is where his language is, that that it was an accident and the onus of it is on rest on Candace. It's, it's very powerful. Okay. So then we have to ask ourselves, let's eliminate, did she fall down the stairs and, you know, people, everybody, you know, panics. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just thinking, yeah. out loud. I'm thinking. Yeah, out loud. Right. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah. How does she get out of the basement? If that's up the them little stairs, she was real agile. I mean, she, she swing around like a monkey. She could pull her body weight up on a swing. The boys can do that. Right. So she, from the moment Candace is dealing with mom, and when do you think would have been the moment the somebody would have snatched her? Right. Was either somebody was laying in wait right. in the basement. Or that dog trail there, because, you, you know, if you just have a little bit of camouflage on, you're not going to see them. Right. And uh, so they could have snatched her quick. What did your boys say? They they were glued to the TV. They weren't 
and you can't say nothing to them. They, they're just in La La Land. Right. They're all glued to that damn TV and their games on their phones and everything. So they, you know. Were they playing? My, were they playing any games? Like yeah, they were playing games, and they was on YouTube watching. Uh, I forget what that is. Where they, uh, it's like a puzzle game where you build stuff on there. I don't know. I forget what it's called, but they loved watching that. Oh, Minecraft? Minecraft, yeah. <sighs> you know, I love that. I used to call it Minecraft. <laughs> yeah, that's what it is. Yeah, yeah. exactly. And so what did, you, what did each of your sons tell you? The, well, they, I, one time me and Josie were... He just started crying. I don't even remember what I said to him or what. And he says, Dad, it's not my fault. Remember when he said, if I said a word to Summer, she'd just break? Right, right. You know, and he was crying. I said, I know, son. I know it's not your fault. I'm sorry. Where was and I don't even remember what I said to him or what to make him cry. But I just remember him saying, it's not my fault. You know, and I was, I felt bad, but we ain't been the same. We ain't gonna be the same. So what? Sure. What, Chris? What he did there is he he blamed his son. Yeah. That's that that's his that's what he's telling us is that he he blamed his son, and uh, and it caused him to cry. And he's like, Dad, it's not my fault. And because his son knows it's not his fault, but they have to make it their fault. He they have to make it the son's. This is what he said earlier that we was always cussing them boys. They already always leaving the door open. We, we was always cussing them. He's, he was blaming them then. And that they, this is the, this is the only way that the, the, the abduction hypothesis works. There's no other way. And, and, and so and we get some of that body language too. in the boy during the press conference, when he's got his arm around his yeah. head and he's got his head right. down the whole time. He's, he's yeah. not looking up at all. Yeah, that's a that's a defeated posture of uh, almost an abusive, abuse victim type posture. Yeah, but finish your thought. I'm sorry, I caught you in the middle of it. I apologize. No, 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 that was it. Let's, let's keep go to the next one, and I'll and I'll give you a few more thoughts. Your other boy, Shay. Wyatt told my wife that if he would have went downstairs with Summer like she wanted him to, she wouldn't probably be, wouldn't be gone. He feels like he's kind of guilty of it too. So, so there you go. Uh, they're they're both blaming their sons. It's uh, he just he just gave us insight into this conversation that they had with the boys, and man, my my heart just aches for those boys that the guilt mm -hmm. that they put on them. He he just said he feels like he's kind of guilty of it too. They guilted those boys, and man, that's a terrible thing to do. Because it's it's a it's a baseless accusation, but it's necessary to save their hides. It's necessary to to further this this story that they're trying to get out that Summer was abducted, and that's yeah. Chris. It's that's just it's just a narrative. That's all it yeah, is. Yeah, and these poor kids are victims as well. I mean, they're they're yeah. being pawned here. They are for the narrative. Yeah, they are. I, I feel bad for them. Waylon's too young. He's just he's just too young to understand right now. Just, you know, and what what were they playing hide and seek? Maybe. No, they were all upstairs. The boys were playing uh, Minecraft, watching Minecraft, and playing. You notice I didn't ask where, and he volunteered yeah. the basement. You you know, good point. Awesome. Games on the phone like they always do. They get stuck on it. Right. Yeah. Now, when when they kids, I mean, their brothers and sister, did they play a lot of hide and seek? Uh, That's a great place to play it up there in that. Yeah, place. they have a few times, but at that time, you know, they, well, from everything I've heard, they they wasn't. And then oh, two, they took the boys to some specialists somewhere to be questioned. Oh, good. Yeah, a couple of times. Okay. Because they can't just come out and ask them questions. They have to take them to specialists. So they was gone for quite a while. They had to drive them quite a ways away. Right. And 
what what do you think they shared with them? The truth. You know, just what everything I've told you. Yeah. Which I'm sure is the absolute truth. Yeah. No, I boy. <laughs> you know, oh, wait a minute. You know, kids, right. kids have a tough time. I, you know, when I was going through that, this just this just hit me like a bombshell. Um, <laughs> the truth, <laughs> everything I told you. So, he's, in other words, he did. It just tells me he likely told the boys what they needed to say to the forensic interviewers because those are those the people that ask the special questions. Those are the forensic interviewers. And uh, this is what you should tell him. He 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 coached him. Um, <laughs> just everything I told you, which I'm sure is the ap absolute truth. Chris, that right there, that statement, he he might as well have said, "I've lied to you, Chris. I I've what I have told you is not the truth." Yeah. No. You know what? And what's fascinating is this story is just so consistent in terms of the rhythm, okay? And then when you start asking questions uh, to, to divert that rhythm in any way, shape, or form, you hear, I don't know, I'm not sure, I don't remember, okay? Yeah. And what I want to point out to our audience is look how he's talking about his sisters, his stepsisters, okay? about them coming forward and saying what they've said. His response has been, I don't know, I'm not sure, I don't remember. Okay? So keep that in perspective here to Steve's point, what he just brought up. Um, I, I I hear exactly what you're saying, Steve, and 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 I agree with you, thousand yeah. percent. That's a thousand dollar bingo card on that one. There you go. Okay. There you go. Um, Time, you know, depends yeah. on the totality of the circumstances. Yeah. And what? And, you know. Mm -hmm, go ahead. Go ahead. I called CBI and says, "Look, I'm gonna go over here and get this address for you." I took off work, went and drove clear over there. He's talking about the got the address. I said, I think you need to check it out because they had a truck in service at that time that had the ladder, uh, that ladder rack thing on it. I said, it's not here now, but they did have one in the shop there. So, and walk me and plus, that truck. Where's that truck So he in? shifts it back to the drug I have no idea. Somebody said that they seen it He's parked in our driveway when Summer was got, got gone. So it's just the eyewitness account. Hey, now, but that, at the bottom of the hill or the top of the hill? In our driveway at the bottom. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, in our driveway, you know, at the bottom. Somebody's seen it, supposedly. But that's all it is. It's just an eyewitness account or whatever. And, and they've never found this truck. And But it could have been the one where his dad works. They might have took that truck over there and was out on parole. And I mentioned all that to him. You know, everything, search all them. So now he's interjected another set of suspects. Yeah, and, and one thing that, that was taken out of, I know because you, you deleted, you redacted the names out of the, the transcript. Yeah. But one of the things that was redacted was uh, that this person has several storage sheds. And so now we're back to this this oh, wow. theme about the good, sheds, which, which we saw last time um <laughs> for wow. whatever reason this don is locked into these sheds and it, and it, so uh there's something with the sheds that that needs to be looked into interesting but he probably i mean he could i don't know when you got them kind of connections and you hang around with druggies you know and they're into all these you know criminal activities you know you can basically make a lot of stuff happen if you want to if you wanted to right and still little, still somebody's little girl is probably not too far-fetched do you think she's alive well after the all the dreams that i've had you know two of them sent to me via facebook and the one that i had and the one that uh, candace had 
I'm not sure. She's either in a really well-to-do place or it was her last thoughts. Interesting. You know, because of the dreams. And I'm going to write those dreams down in writing and share them with everybody. Yeah. And, and what, what, uh, what about when you said early on your thoughts, uh, walk me through what you were thinking early when you were seeing her and in your mind in certain places and even the, you know when i talked to you the last time your thought about you know maybe she's dead and buried where, where did that yeah come, where did that come from well because the dream that i had i'll just go ahead and tell you she's i was at a i was at a construction site but this was this was a commercial construction site and i don't I haven't done commercial since i left houston but this had these real big steel studs in it, and, and the day was just, it was, it was more beautiful than any day I've ever seen in my life. It was like perfect, and uh, this building I in was, was beautiful, and I was working on it, and Summer was sitting there on the floor playing with her dolls or something, and uh, she was dressed beautifully. She, I've never seen her so more beautiful. And it just, the dream was like, like, like heaven, I guess you could say. And I said, Summer, where were you? And she says, down the road, you know, and it was just like a perfect, beautiful dream. You know, that I can't explain. And I haven't had no other dreams since whatsoever. And then, uh, Candace's dream was that they were fishing her and Summer. And, uh, she caught a fish and she was really super happy and she she reeled in the air and she'd give it huggies and kisses and let it go and that was the end of her dream and uh but yeah and then had a woman in florida contact me said that she had a dream and she said something about take care of yucky you know to, and make sure to tell daddy to take care of her dogs and stuff and, and the woman's asked me what does yucky mean and i says that's that was her dog named lucky she couldn't say lucky so we called it yucky and that's how that got its name and she couldn't pronounce it lucky that's awesome i i, yeah. I had a dog named lucky yeah wow Years and then there was a yeah a woman in canada had a dream that she was sitting there on a bench with her, a swing on a porch, and she says, can I tell you a secret? She says, I miss my daddy. Tell I used to stroke her hair. And tell her I love her. And I told her that's what I, I used to do that all the time. And I never heard from her again after that. But, I mean, how would she know that? She, Summer says, can I tell you a secret, you know? But that's what makes me think that she could possibly be gone, you know? In some of her last thoughts. Because you know, when you're in a bad situation, some of the thoughts you have before it's over, you know, or whatever, you know, like that, it might be something like that, you know, I don't know. Yeah. But I have nobody's had any dreams, and I haven't had no dreams. Candace had a dream today that people were out to kill her and were chasing her everywhere, but I says, well, that ain't too far fetched. <laughs> so let's just call out the audible yeah, here, Chris. So his what he's telling us is that his perception of reality is that Summer's deceased. Uh, it was likely an accident, and it's it's Candace's fault. And he just, you know, when Candace says, "I had a dream that people were out to kill me," and he's like, "Well, yeah, yeah, that's probably not too far fetched." And you know, he's again because because you know what you did, you know, it's that's the inference and. Anyway, that's his, that's his perception. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, that ties it all. Those three pieces tie consistent here. They're very consistent. They do. Yeah. Fascinating, they all fit. Steve. Well, help me understand. Um, 
you know where where you're at right now internally in terms of just Don dealing with you know a lot of the moving parts and you know stuff like that. Um, I'm just I'm really tore up. I loved her with all my heart, and she loved me with all her heart. I was I couldn't believe somebody could love me like that and look up to me like that. And why and is I'm, that? Help me understand that. I don't know why she loved me so much because nobody else was else in this world ever loved me like that. It's, it, Not like that. It, in your past, well, walk me through why you feel that way. Well, because when my parents divorced when we were kids, both of them got married to, and we had step parents and our step parents hated us and our, you know, and my mom went with my stepdad. But, you know, well, they need, you know, it was just really mean, you know. My stepdad kept me away so he could molest my sisters. And I, at the end, that is a true statement. His stepdad mm. was named Kelly. And he was very brutal. And he did uh, mm. essay his sisters. And that's I sad. didn't know why he hated me. Huh? As I just said, that's sad. Yep. Really. And why he loved my sister so much. And my dad, you know, my stepmom hated me. You know, one of them didn't want me around. Because of Jeannie? And Mary, his mm -hmm. stepsisters. And my stepsisters and all them hated me too. And these are the victims. Yeah. And who's that? Who are they? Jeannie and uh, Jeannie and all. Of them. I mean, not all of them, but they they wanted me out of the picture so they could build money from my dad, which they've done all these years. But so they. They were constantly called the cops on me and everything. Just, and just keeps trying to call me. I call her back here a little bit. But, you know, it's just, it's been nothing but, hey, you know, then my dad, he kind of turned on me too to make her happy. It made her happy that, you know, it made her happy that he treated me like the redheaded stepchild. <coughs> Yeah, they've made a lot of. St uh, I've, I've read your stuff. Yeah. It sounds like they said a bunch of stuff about you. What, what did they? Yeah. What did they say? Well, they see. Dad was going to leave me his house so I could move back to Utah when he died. And ever since then, well, and see too, I don't understand. Trish is Jeannie's daughter, and she claimed that I raped her, and. The other girl, I can't remember her name. Um, I don't even know who it is. But I know I'm, rel I'm related to him through step family, but you know, they claimed that I did all this stuff. And, you know, uh, I don't know if I said any, if they said anything, I was going to kill them and all that, you know. And they didn't, why, I don't understand why after all these years, summer gets gone and all, automatically they turn on me. You know, but I chalk it up to dad was going to give me the house. Okay. And then, you know, no, you know what, Chris? Chris, he, he didn't deny the rape. He just said he just doesn't understand why they waited this long until, you know, summer gets gone. And, and now there's now they're turning on him. But he, he didn't deny it. Yeah. And his survivor Jeannie she's got four kids now and the moment she heard summer was gone she automatically said I've got to do something I think he's hurt her that was her words not mine yeah. and so immediately she stepped out into the world and said this guy has been had molested me from the ages of 5 to 12 years old that this and that was kind of you know, he turns it on the house and the family dynamics about, you know, the house when Jeannie turns it on the, the S.A. These are just tactics to keep me away. And I told him, I, I told him, I think through Facebook or whatever, I'll never call my dad again. I'll never talk to him again. You can have it all. You guys can fight over it. 
So, you know, the last time I talked to my dad, my sister was there. She handed him the phone, and I never talked to anybody else, and that was it. So I won't call their number. And and just to remind everybody, uh, for Jeannie, the survivor, she was five years old when this started. It ended at 12. It did not start at 12. It started at 5, ended at 12. Okay, just just remember that. Because stepmom calls them and tells them everything. Is that the, you said, what was her name? Uh, um, my stepsister is Jeannie. Jeannie. And yeah, we, we, we did have a relationship when we were younger. Now this is where he's going to confess to it. Yes. He's going to confess to, you know, a, f- a five-year-old, okay, and ended when she was 12 again. Right? And what was and the... She's, she's just as guilty as I am. So... She's trying to pull the wool over everybody's eyes like she's a Miss Innocent and all this and that. Well, she's not. So walk me through that. Help me understand. I would rather not. He knows it's a crime. He... Yeah, he does. Yeah, he, he yeah. absolutely knows it. Uh, well, in that first call that we played tonight, he says that she instigated it. Yeah, she's five years old. At five. I mean, last time I checked, you know, kids at five years old are trying to figure out, you know, what the paw puppy, paw patrol chase on the case looks like on their pajamas. Okay. And and he's he starts this conversation off with, you know, so we kind of have a, like a relationship, okay? Guys, if you're just joining us, go, when you're done, when we're done, go listen to the first call we played. It's a three-minute call where he lays out uh, a little bit more about this, you know, problem here with his sister, okay? I mean, there, there is no question in my mind that this woman who's been living with this for 37 years the moment she saw Summer disappeared, picked up the phone and called TBI and said, I need to tell you what happened to me from the ages of 5 to 12. And these, these are the women that Don's going on these other programs and throwing under the bus. Okay? So let's all think about that. Okay. Uh, but, so we kind of had a relationship when we were younger. Yeah, I was, I was a bit older. I had a dirt bike, you know, I don't know how old I was exactly, but she met, she started dating her cousin, which was about 12 years old at that time. And ever since then, she just wanted me out of the picture. Ever since then. And 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 it started all this. And this was not her first cousin, as he's projecting here. Okay, that's not true. Hateful stuff ever since. And how old were you? You know, I don't know. Maybe 15. I don't know. And how old was she? I I don't know. You know, she was a lot younger than me. You know, and I thought this, and I remember thinking this, why would, I I didn't think it was right. You know, but I was too young to understand how girls are too. What, what? So she's five, he's 12. She's 12, he's 19 when it ended and he's still not able to figure that math out yeah when you say what do you want to say steve about this he's blaming this on her again he, he's still yeah. blaming this on on uh genie uh, who's a lot younger he doesn't want to say how young she is because he knows it was illegal he just said i was 15 and she was a lot younger than me he doesn't want to give you the age because he knows it was it was illegal and it's all her fault in his mind. Yeah. And and we as uh, investigators, right? How many other genies are there? Right. Exactly. And because I know of one, I can I I know her name. I'm not going to say it on YouTube, of course not. But she was sleeping in the bottom bunk one night sleeping over with Genie. And he molested her. And I hope she comes forward. I hope she has the courage to come forward. And then it won't be his sisters anymore. 
And if anybody else out there is a survivor, please call your local authorities like Jeannie and let them know your story. God bless you. He didn't think yeah. it was right. What were you guys? Well, because she was, she was younger. Because she was younger. No, she would play with my thing and I would play with hers. Okay. I and mean, that's about it. I mean, um, okay. And how long did that go on? I don't know. Uh, for a little while or whatever, but like I said, she she got with Ron, and that she ended up, uh, ended up having kids and everything. So let me, she goes, uh, like I said, she got with Blank uh, when he was just a little boy, and that's when everything changed. And then I asked, who's that? She ended up marrying him and having kids. That's her cousin. They end up having kids, everything. And what about this per this other person you mentioned, uh, Tish? What, what's her name? Her, that's, her daughter's name was Trish. And the last time I seen her, she was just a little girl. And then... Uh, the other girl, I'm not sure who she even is. Okay. I don't know. That's the one in the bunk bed. Yeah, yeah. Oh, they're, they're all family. Yes. Right. Oh, that's fine. They don't want me around dad. That's fine. Whatever. Just, and, and so I, I just don't call. And you say they they come after you now? What 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 do you mean? No, they, as far as I know, they haven't come after me. My sister's tried to defend me, but, uh, but I just told him I'll never call my dad again. That's fine. Okay. So as far as I know, they're not, you know, I don't, I don't need all that bullshit. And Even though it's bullshit. I is, just, is your dad still alive? Yeah, he's still alive, but he ain't gonna, he's, he's like 85. So. Oh, okay. And for the record, I talked to his sister's. And Don called his dad, according to them, and confessed to molesting the girls. Wow. And this was just this was just recently. Okay? And he also told family that there's a seventeen year old somewhere in the picture. And now he's trying to backtrack on that piece of the puzzle. Mm. Okay. I'm sure they're all getting a big fight over that house when he dies. And where did, where are they at? Utah. What, what What's up with the water in Utah? Yeah, they have no water this year. Yeah, they're, they... <laughs> they didn't. They got reservoirs <laughs> everywhere, you know, and they That's usually get snow packed. I, I ran I know. Every spring it fills up all the reservoirs, but this they didn't get no rain or snow last year. Yeah, no, I, I know. It's like the, everything is like yeah. a, a low level of than historic. Yeah. Uh, yep. Well, yes. And so I heard that, you know, people are throwing you under the bus on, you know, everything. And uh, oh, yeah. so, of course, you know, I have a, a show tonight. I'm a program tonight. Yeah. So right. one of the things that I, I want you to understand is yeah. in order to process information you have to go through a process of elimination right uh, so, absolutely. so that's why it no matter what happened no it it's it potentially could be stinky tonight is what i'm saying okay, okay. because um, go ahead that's fine i'm, I'm listening to you but no you're fine. because people you know are going to say and do right. no matter what right yeah absolutely so, so yes we have to we have to get to a place where it becomes so logical yeah. of what happened with, right. with summer that yeah. it's not even it's just there okay, okay. and Sounds good to me. and that's where the truth comes in that's what we want buddy okay that's what we want more than anything. so now part of that is and i don't want you mad at me but part okay. of it we have to talk about your background Okay. Oh, man. I know, but uh, you gotta understand. Okay. That yeah, but doing that, doing that, it might hurt help hurt me getting my boys back. And that's why I don't need. That's why they told lawyers told me not to talk to y'all at all. But Don, they already yeah. they already know your background. You know that, and I know. Yeah. That. Yeah. So it's not what just like Candace, 
when Candace yeah. when Candace came out and people went, oh wow, okay, yeah. and then yeah. you know the boys are taken, okay? and I don't I don't want to talk about the boys, okay, yeah. in terms of that's that's where you were told don't talk about the boys by the court. Well, yeah, and, and I've you, already mentioned I feel safe where they're at because I wasn't feeling safe. It, you know, for a while there, where there was at, there's too much going on. Right, and that's where the the court appointed attorney came in, and right. and the order from the court to say don't yeah. say anything about the boys. Okay, right. that's the gag order you were talking about. And that's what I was going to yeah. tell people tonight. Okay. Okay. But that at the same time, okay, we've got to look for, you know, things that say, you know, okay, where are we? With, yeah. with this right now and right. how do we help collectively in yeah. pure in, in you know a straight heart how do we yeah. how do we find summer right. and right. you've just talked about some of those ideas today mm -hmm. I don't things that I don't think people have ever heard okay right. and you know those What happened to our audio? Yeah, my pods just went out, guys. So hang on. Steve, you're not going to believe this. What's that? My, oh, there it goes. Okay, I my uh, ear pods just went out, so I got to uh, switch uh, speakers here for a sec. So let me oh, turn it back okay. on. So the kind of things that make a difference. Yeah. Those are the kind of things that connect the dots. Okay. So sounds good. All right. So don't don't be uh don't be uh, don't be hating on me. Uh, okay, buddy. As we go, okay. As we go through right. this, it's okay. It, it's part of the process. Is there anything you okay. want? Is there anything else you want to tell me before I that I didn't ask you that you feel is important? No, this guy, because they, they, I think they, he was also connected with them. They found some connection with them too. These detectives. I, I'd like to give you their number. Okay, there he was just talking about the uh, detective agency. You know, the the actually they're not even, you know, detectives. They were just uh, a a couple of folks that were volunteering to help their time, and uh, I think they were turning yeah. a lot of information over uh, to TBI. What, is there anything else in here, Steve? Because I think we're at the end here. No, uh, that's it. Yeah, and so a couple of things uh, in in a couple of words, kind of wrap it up where you think um, this actually goes uh, internally in terms of what's the big picture here from your professional uh, expertise. Well, um, you know, Don, I'm just, I was just scrolling ahead just a little bit here as you were asking, is there anything else? And, and you asked him once again, if the right person is caught again, what would you do to that person? And he says, I would have to turn it over to the Lord, you know, because the Lord says vengeance is mine. So I have to do that. I have to, I have to, God has changed my life, you know, big time. And, and what he's doing is again, it's part of the theme here. Uh, he's he's calling upon deity, uh, and this is very typical of what he does. And a lot of people do this when they they really need to be believed. But he there's there's no he doesn't want any consequence for the the person that is responsible for can for uh, Summer's disappearance. And uh, so I asked, okay, why is that? Well, his language. This the strongest 
the strongest part of this for me has been this accident theme and the, the finger pointing to Candace early on. He, he said, I, this is a female. It's her car took her not too far away. Um, it's, he knows that it is a female that's responsible and he just keeps blaming Candace throughout this whole interview. And you, you interviewed her for an hour and a half and it continued on the whole time. And he's trying to portray himself as the good guy that, that I didn't do anything wrong. Um, I'm, I'm always the one cleaning things up. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the good dad and, uh, normalizing himself. Uh, so you must believe I'm a good guy because this is what I, you know, we normally do. It's just, this theme is, is throughout his, his whole interview. The biggest part of this was was the accident and whether it was I mean, he he allowed for possibility that there was an accident uh, due to uh, drugs or alcohol. He allowed psychologically that it was it was OK. He accepted it and it was just OK. Accidents happen, um, but it's Candace's fault. And he, and he painted the picture that, um, you know, he felt for a long time that that there was going to be an accident. Someone was going to have an accident and it's sad, uh, but it's going to be, it's, he's told Candace, make sure nothing happens to her and put the onus of this accident upon, upon Candace. And this thing just carried on and on throughout. And he, uh, his persuasion was just off the charts. And so for, for me, Chris, that's, that's, that's where it lies. That's where he left it. Uh, he hasn't given me anything since to to change that opinion. It was kind of the theme throughout the interview. And it's, it sounds to me like there was some type of accident that that he's trying to clean up and cover for. It's an inconvenience. But but um, it was he according to what he's saying, he's he's saying it was Candace's fault. Um, I. I we, we talked a little bit about the job site that day. No doubt that he he was at work that day. The, the, but but his language tells us that he likely wasn't there the whole day. He would have you believe that he was there the whole day, but that's not what he said. It was just there long enough to be seen uh, by the boss and by another uh, employee, a coworker. And it was just long enough to establish a, an alibi. So there's no doubt that he was there, but, um, you know, it, we don't know for how long. Um, he was talking with, with Candace all the way home, he says, through Facebook. But in the beginning, he said that he didn't get a call back from Candace. And, and, uh, and you know, so that's kind of why he was, he was, he felt that summer was, was, was gone is because he, something bad had happened because he Kenneth didn't call him back. And, and there was another deceptive aspect. There was a lot of deception throughout his whole interview. Um, but we know that he was talking with Candace the whole time because he, it was, he said it. So that's where, that's where it rests with me is that there was likely a, an accident. Um, according to what he said in this interview. Uh, so either, for me, it lies that either he believes there was or he knows there was and he's he's covering for that. And his narrative is just actually a story he's trying to get out that uh, the abduction is just a story. It's just a narrative. Uh, it's not the truth. He told you towards the end that that he was he was he was deceiving you. Uh <laughs> I, when I heard that, I thought, oh my gosh, that was kind of a mic drop for me. Uh, he, he let you know that a lot of what he said was, was not the truth. So uh, it's amazing, Chris. I just, I'm never, I'm never ceased to, I never cease to be amazed at how much information people reveal when they, when they talk. And there's a lot of psychology and stuff going on in this. We don't have time to discuss, but my goodness, the words are so powerful. This is, for me, it's like the, this is the holy grail of investigations, how much people actually give away uh, when they're asked the right questions in the right way. And, and when they talk, their, their brain has the information and, and it just comes out and you just have to know how to mine it. It's just an amazing 
amazing tool to use. I, and it's, it's my hope that every investigator out there will learn how to do this uh, at, at, at some level. And, and, and hopefully a lot of them gain expertise in this because it's going to solve a lot more cases and they're not going to go cold. And, and this will solve a lot of cold cases as well. So it's uh, man, just a fab fabulous tool. My, my hope is that, that Don and Candace will, will just do the right thing. And, and, you know, Don, you were right. Uh, it, you know, accidents happen and, you know, the, the Chris told you that to just, if it was an accident to just say it was an accident and, and it puts everything to bed and, and, you know, that's, that's what we want here is that it's all about summer. It's not, it's not about you and it's not about Candace. It's about summer. And, and that's the end that we need to come to. And that's, that's the resolve that she's a five-year-old girl for crying out loud. Um, the respect that you will gain for doing the right thing, for telling the truth is, is immense. I, I, I'm not sure that you understand how much respect that people will have for you if you do the right thing to, to, uh, to tell the truth about Summer and what happened to her. So that's, that's where it lies with me. Um, uh, I'm just hoping that, that Don and Candace uh, come out and, uh, and, and do the right thing and, and, and tell the truth about what really happened. You know, Steve, that, uh, those are powerful, powerful words uh, in of themselves and, and a powerful request. And, and in all sincerity, I know, I know what kind of uh, professional and what kind of heart you have. Uh, and, you know, there's a lot that goes around, obviously, with, you know, the, the emotional responses to this. But, but you're 100% right. It is, it's the family's responsibility to put it uh, where it belongs. And uh, right. that way, all of the, you know, the he said, she said, all of the stuff that you just uh, mentioned, um, it does go away. And so, you know, let's talk... Uh, well, we've got a little more time here. Uh, tell us, tell everybody about you, your company, uh, your website, and um, you know because I think it's important that people realize that you know you just haven't fallen off a turnip truck and shown up on the interview room uh, here. Uh, but yeah. you know, so I mean, you have a you had almost a thirty year career in law enforcement. You've trained thousands. Uh, of law enforcement officers uh, everywhere. Uh, so give people a little insight uh, into who you are. And guys, his uh, website is down below. So I know this is going to sound like a little pitch, but I think it's worth it because uh, Steve is the real deal and he's, he's an incredible human being. And believe it or not, we both have compassion for Don and for Candace uh, throughout this whole situation. And we understand you know, where the anger comes from, where the backlash comes from, uh, we're used to it. <laughs> and, yeah. and, you know, it, it's okay. It's, it's okay. Uh, better me uh, and others than, you know, the children. So my shoulders are big. I'm a big boy and uh, I'm very comfortable. But so, Steve, uh, tell everybody a little bit about your company and why you do what you do today. Yeah, thanks, uh, Chris. Uh, so, yeah, my company is Truth and Lies Analysis Group, and um, you know our focus is is on training. The focus was a big, in the beginning training uh, law enforcement investigators, criminal investigators, and uh, you know it was mostly law enforcement, military, but then it it we got into a, a little bit of corporate uh, investigative training, which they deal a lot with the same a lot of the same things that, that we dealt with on the law enforcement side. My whole purpose was to make better investigators. I saw what, what a fantastic tool was that, that, uh, that I was using in the last, you know, portion of my career and how valuable it was. It saved time. It got to the chase. I got more, more information out of my interviews. Um, and I got more confessions and, and, it's just I can't say enough how valuable uh, what the tool is that we teach. 
And so that's where it all started was just to uh, um, make better investigators. It's, it's, it's morphed now uh, into the opportunity for everyone to, to get the same training. Uh, my, my website is, is theirs at truthtolies.com. Um, if you go there, at the bottom of, of my homepage, there's a free PDF. Uh, download the PDF. Um, I'm not going to share your email with, with anybody. It's, it's, so don't worry about that. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great uh, bit of information there. And, and the course that I teach to law enforcement is now available to everyone, to all of you out there. It's available. It's a fantastic uh, course. Uh, we filmed a live course. It was, it was filmed in front of a, a law enforcement uh, group. Um, it was, it was a, a really good class to film. And uh, I've, I've added a little bit to it. And, and and I've put it out there now for for everyone to be able to access. The really good thing for for all of you is that for uh, a limited time, uh, it is available to everyone at the law enforcement price. And uh, and I'll tell you that we we discount these courses a lot for for law enforcement because we know that you know the budgets are thin and there's there's a there's a lot of uh, moving parts with. With, with law enforcement, there's a lot of things for them to allocate their money to. And uh, we want to get as many investigators trained. And so those, the price is low. And uh, so that's it's available to everybody right now. Uh, we I'll have additional courses coming out, uh, you know, later. Um, I'm working on them now. But for the for the time being, this is this is the one you want. It's it's the, the things that you're going to learn in this course or if you like what you if you if you saw the value here in, the, in these three segments, you've seen how powerful it is. You, you're going to love that course. And I'll just, I'll just add this in too, Chris. Um, the way that we use what I do as a, as a forensic statement analyst, uh, the way we use this in solving criminal cases, uh, it, it, it's so powerful. But let me just say, the words reveal the inner self. It's re the words reveal what's going on up in the mind. Um, even when we, when, when the person doesn't doesn't want to reveal those things, it's 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 so powerful. This the same can happen in reverse. If we if we change the way that we talk. If we change the way that we speak about our circumstances, about our life, about the people around us, if you do that, your world will change as well. If you talk, uh, if you talk negative about your circumstances and the people around you, your world's going to be pretty negative. But if you speak positive about them, uh, you speak positive about your circumstances and about the people around you, then you're going to have a positive life, and, and it's just going to make a world of difference for you. So what what uh what i have found and experienced and others are experiencing the same thing when you start getting into this this type of training and you realize how powerful it is it changes your whole perspective of of words and language and 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 the brain and how it works and how it was created to work it was created to to default to the, everything that's good to telling the truth uh, to be, to be, uh, to, um, what's the word to be, we're, we're confronted and we're, and we, we were, we're, we don't like when we are confronted with people that are committing crimes and it's, it's, uh, it, it doesn't sit right with us. Well, that's because we're, our default setting is, is everything that's good. And so that should tell you something about how, how our brains were created. And, uh, so that's what I'm saying. If, if you speak, positive and good you're you're tapping into everything uh that is good around you and there's a lot there's a lot there even in this world that's full of turmoil right now um if you want to find the positive and and change your circumstances then change your language and that's the byproduct of, of what we teach and what we do it it helps you understand that on a on a deeper level and uh and that's my hope for everybody out there um change your change your world man make it a, make it a better place awesome 
So uh, everybody, we want to thank you uh, for all being here. So the takeaway uh, is, you know, let's continue uh, to press forward in our search for summer. Uh, let's pray that she uh, is, um, you know, out there somewhere. Uh, keep the faith. But statistically, I mean, realistically, uh, this far into it, um, every day gets uh, uh, worse and worse. Uh, for that sweet baby. Uh, we don't know all that's happened. We have some ideas now that, you know, from a professional level, there seems to be potentially some clarity here. Um, but uh, that said, uh, we want to thank each and every one of you on behalf of Steve, uh, myself, all of our mods, uh, Karen, Dylan, and uh, everybody in our TRR family. Uh, you know, somebody said the integrity room. Uh, we, we, it's, we, we appreciate that very much. And we work hard to make sure that the truth is the truth and it's a constant. And sometimes the truth is messy. Uh, and specifically when you're working with people, uh, who, um, disappear or have been victims of violent crimes, uh, the truth is messy. And you have to treat people with compassion. You may not agree with them. You may not like them, i.e. what they do to the other human spirit. But you do have to remember that ultimately uh, we all are going to pass from this existence at some point. And my focus is about my life and their focus is about theirs. They're going to have a lot more problems, I think. Uh, than I will in as long as I stay focused on, you know, helping other people the best that I can and vice versa. So with that, we want to wish you um, uh, a fantastic evening. Uh, aloha. Uh, and thank you so much for trusting us. We got a lot more coming uh, on this case uh, with Summer. So uh, be good to each other. And uh, I'll see you on the next one. Uh, Steve, are you ready to go to Hawaii? I'm ready. Take care, everybody. Let's go, bud. Have a good night, everybody. Hard working every day. I'm stressed out. 24-7, babe. No, no timeouts. Wish we could fly away.